Did you hear the news? Did you get the memo? The era of the strong and independent woman is dead. And it was killed by their own spending. I have a few things I want to show you here. I came across some articles that were printed and it puts a very scary view onto a lot of things. And I'm, I'll get to here in a little bit about why this is particularly a female centric issue, a female centric problem. First and foremost, I want to go ahead and take a look at the poster child here. Manhattan, New York, they are now reporting that the median rent in Manhattan now, the median rent has hit $4,000 a month. $4,000 a month. I remember when I was in high school, we considered it to be outrageous in Manhattan for the rent to be $2,000 a month. Now it's $4,000 a month. Or to put it more succinctly, there's another article that works out the math in a little different way. It states that you need to earn at least $160,000 a year to rent anything in New York City. Now, to be certain here, folks from New York, you have some who use Manhattan interchangeably with New York City. So be aware when you hear that kind of thing. I want to read to you here some of this article. I want to read some of this article here to you. So you understand exactly what they're talking about here. From Hannah Frischberg in the New York Post. Earn less than six figures. Good luck scoring even a modest New York City apartment. The median ask for a rental in Manhattan has skyrocketed to $3,925 a month. A staggering 31.9% year-over-year jump from April of 2021. So in other words, the rent in Manhattan has jumped by 31%. I'm not talking about in the luxury areas. We're talking about the whole thing. And I'll get into the details here in just a moment. 31% in a single year. And Manhattan is far from the only one, by the way. 31% in a single year. Now, they go on to say, it's jumped by 31% from April 2021, according to Douglas Eileman's latest market report. That means... In order to apply for a city apartment, a renter would need to earn $157,000 per year under the 40 times rent rule that landlords generally require. Now, for those of you who may not be quite familiar with the 40 times rent rule, long story short, what it basically says is that the 40 times rent rule basically says that a renter needs to make an annual salary equal to approximately 40 times the monthly rent on their New York City apartment. So your yearly income needs to be 40 times, at least 40 times, whatever your monthly rent is. That's the 40 times rule. The article goes on to say it's a new record high for rent in the city coming off record lows during the thick of the pandemic. The unprecedented demand for apartments in the city as New Yorkers return to work, as New Yorkers return to work, as New Yorkers return to work, and new work from homers move to New York City has even resulted in bidding wars for studio apartments as the Post previously reported. Meanwhile, the median New York household income was most recently just $67,000, according to the census. So to qualify for a Manhattan rental, you need to rake in close to three times what an everyday New Yorker makes. A lot of young folk are going to be moving back in with their parents along with the unprecedented number who have already done it or were never even able to leave. The article goes on to say, broken down further, the data shows that median rent for a Manhattan studio 
was $2,850 a month, up 28.4% from last year, meaning eligible tenants must make $114,000 to pass the 40 times rule. One bedrooms jumped to $3,995 a month, up from just $3,000 a year ago. Now imagine that, that the rent last year for the exact same one bedroom, last year it was $3,000 a month. This year it's almost, it's basically $4,000 a month. $3,995 is $4,000 a month. That's a $1,000 increase in just 12 months. It goes on to say in Brooklyn, the median rent reached $3,048, up from $2,730 year over year. A studio in the city's largest borough will now set you back $2,674, meaning that to move to Brooklyn, you'll need to haul in a minimum of $106,000. Waterfront Queens neighborhoods cost even more. The median rent in Northwestern Queens, shout out to the Caribbeans, shot to $3,126 a month, up from $2,581 year over year. A studio in an area like Long Island City will now cost you $2,929 a month, a staggering 51% more than in 2021. If you'll all remember, Amazon wanted to open their facility, uh, open their second headquarters in Long Island City. If you'll all remember that. My New Yorkers will remember it well. They're more familiar with it than anybody else would be. But for the rest of you there, by the way, man, remember I told you all that this was bad for Queens, that this was bad for Queens and Long Island City because Hudson Yards had already been built out and that was really the last large piece of real estate that you could build on in Manhattan. And remember what I told you all that Amazon put a spotlight on Long Island City and that I promise you that Long Island City was never going to be the same after that. Well, it's never going to be the same. It's never going to be the same. Exactly as I predicted it. So there goes Long Island City. A 51% jump from just 12 months ago. The article goes on to say, but don't expect relief anytime soon. Rents are expected to rise even higher this summer as recent graduates arrive in town for new jobs. Worse still, the inventory of new apartments is expected to tighten with few new developments coming to market. The city's sales market isn't any better, according to the survey. Now, the city's sales market isn't any better. According to a survey published by Zillow this month, the market has gotten so competitive and stressful that half of home buyers report the process made them cry at least once. Younger buyers were much more likely to shed tears over the experience with 65% of Gen Z buyers and 61% of millennial buyers admitting home buying made them weep. Only 10% of recent home buyers surveyed by Zillow said that no part of the process was stressful. But while times are tough for those not bringing in a bundle, Sky-high prices are nothing new to real estate-scarred New Yorkers who have long relied on swarms of roommates and guarantors to make the rent. Quote, it's not easy to digest, Miller said, noting that inflation is also exacerbating the crisis. Quote, but landlords want renters who are qualified to pay the rent. As we continue to see record rents being set, that also means the threshold for salary will rise as the 40 times rule continues to be relied on. I'm 
tried for a long time to warn you about this. I've tried for a long time to warn you. Arrogance has a steep price. It has a steep price. And just in case you were deceiving yourself and thinking that things were getting going to get easier for you here. Nope. Well, here comes the double whammy, because if you're sitting there saying to yourself, well, at least I got my job, at least I got my job. Well, you do have your job. You do have that. Maybe we need to discuss that for a moment, you think? Gas prices. CNN reporting why the average gas price is at $4.99 a gallon and how high it'll go. For all the strong and independent out there, you better hold on to your butts. You are going to find this to be very, very uncomfortable. The article here says... Why the average gas price is at four ninety nine a gallon and how high it'll go by Chris Isidore. The US average for the price of a gallon of regular gas hit four dollars ninety nine cents according to the most recent reading from AAA Friday. It marked the fourteenth straight day and the thirty first time in the last thirty two that gas is at a record in America. Gas prices have climbed thirty nine cents or eight percent. In just in the two weeks since the start of the Memorial Day weekend kicked off the traditional summer driving season. For much of the country, $5 gas is already here. There are now 20 states plus Washington, D.C. with averages of $5 or above. The highest priced state remains California with a state average of $6.42 a gallon. As of Thursday... 31% of the nation's 130,000 gas stations were already selling gas for more than $5 a gallon. Let me repeat that one more time. As of Thursday, 31% of the nation's 130,000 gas stations are already Selling gas for more than $5 a gallon. And the worst is yet to come for drivers. With the summer travel season just getting underway, demand for gasoline coupled with the cutoff of Russian oil shipments due to the war in Ukraine is sending oil prices higher on global markets. The national average for gasoline could be close to $6 by later this summer, according to Tom Closa, Global Head of Energy Analysis for the OPIS, which tracks gas prices for AAA. Quote, anything goes from June 20th to Labor Day, Closa said about the demand for gas as people hit the road for long-anticipated getaways. Quote, come hell or high gas prices, people are going to take vacations. Let me tell you right now, when you are trying to figure out how you want to pay for gas, the last thing you want to hear anybody say is, anything goes. Let me tell you right now, when I parked that jet black Tahoe up next to the pump a few weeks ago, it was costing me seven, I'm used to it costing me about 60 to 70 dollars to fill up the tank. Last time I did, it was a hundred dollars and I live in Louisiana. Let me say that again. Last time I filled up the tank, it was a hundred dollars. And I live in Louisiana, not New York, not California, not DC, not Atlanta. It cost me a hundred dollars to top it off. That and. It doesn't matter that I can afford it. The problem is I noticed that big of a jump just like any of the rest of you would. I'm looking at the pump like, is this damn thing broken? I see the damn inspection sticker on the side of the pump, but I got questions. I'm not convinced. I saw that number fly past 70. I was like, wait a minute. I must be on the wrong pump. I must be on the wrong pump. 
in the chat room, the news B1 leaders of Lifesaver. Um, diesel is five and a half to almost seven. The U.S. truckers are turning in trucks left and right. I talked to a lady last night there, and she was we were chopping it up on Twitter Space. If you didn't hear my Twitter Space, you need to go do that. And I, I told her that you know, basically, it's costing y'all about a thousand dollars to fill up the tank if you're a diesel truck driver. So all the folks who are getting their CDLs and whatnot, it comes with the territory. But yeah, I mean, everybody's catching a fade right now. Everybody's catching one right now. So, there it is. There it is. Now, here's the thing for you to understand here. When you got gas going up by 8 and 10% in just a couple of weeks. So, gas prices have gone up by what? 25, 50%. But your income hasn't gone up 25 or 50%. Do you realize that? Gas prices have gone up 25 or 50 percent, but your income hasn't gone up 25 or 50 percent. The rent has gone up by 20 or 30 percent, but your income hasn't increased by 20 or 30 percent. Now, I'm going to say something right now that's really going to scare you. Gas prices are not going to return to where they were. Anybody who remembers what happened after 2000, 2001, when Bill Clinton left office and the Arabs jacked up the prices and whatnot, after the financial crisis, it's not going to go down back where it was. Everything is a reason to get it a new high and keep it there. Last time it went from a dollar to two dollars, two dollars to two fifty. Expect him to come back and tell you, hey, things are great. Gas is only three twenty five a gallon. You're thinking about going back to two twenty five. They're gonna be telling you, well, gas prices are dropping. It's only three twenty five a gallon. Mark my words, that's what they're gonna be saying here. In just a couple of months, they're going to tell you, well, gas prices are going down. It's going to be three twenty. It's down to three twenty-five a gallon. Then you consider the fact that food prices are up. If you got a store that's fully stocked, prices for electronics are up. I was trying to buy another laptop. Prices for that are up. For those of you who got kids, Katie, bar the door. For those of you who got kids, oh boy. And God forbid if you are a silly single mom out here. You just knew that Section 8 had you covered. I warned you a decade ago. See, oh, you can forget about Section 8. You're not going to do anything but suffer over there. There's nothing for you. There's nothing for you. Well, I don't need no Section 8. I'm going to get out here and hump it on my own. Um, How's that working out for you? How's that working out for you? I'd like to know. How's that working out? I was going to be nice, but... Yeah, damn nice. Forget about that. Why don't we go ahead and just go take a look around here. Let's go take a look at uh, Zillow. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at Zillow here. Yeah, we'll take a look around here. Well, what do you know? We dropped off in Manhattan. We dropped off in Manhattan here. So why don't we go ahead and see what you got there. Oh, look, you can squeeze yourself in over here for $29.50 a month. That one, I think, is a little bit of an anomaly. I got it set from low to high. That one right there, I think, is something about that listing there, 22,000 square feet. Something's wrong there. It's not one bedroom, one bath for that many square feet. So this one, just disregard that one. What do you know here? Now, that's for the area that I'm zoomed in on here, which would be the lower half. $4,000 a month, one bedroom, one bath, 2,000 square feet, allegedly. One bedroom, one bath, 4,000 square feet. You'll have plenty of space to sleep on the floor. 
Oh, look, two bedrooms, 4500 a month. That'll work out for you. Next up, 5000 So here you go. You get three options here and then straight to 5000 We can zoom out a little bit. We'll zoom out a little bit. And by the way, this is not a whole lot of space when you take a look at that. $3,300 a month for 1,250 square feet. $3,400 a month, 125th Street, that's Harlem. Let me go ahead and hurt your feelings right quick, because that's Harlem, Washington Heights. For my people up there and whatnot, Harlem and Washington Heights. And when you get north of 110th Street, take a look at some of the prices that you're looking at up here in that area. 5000 9000 I mean, right in Harlem, right here in Harlem, $10,000 for a four bedroom, three bath. Not at the World Trade Center, Harlem. In the heart of Harlem. I'm trying to get you to understand something here, damn it. Central Harlem. $4,000 a month, two bedroom, two bath, 1,200 square feet. I guess you can squeeze you and your kids up in there, baby. For all the nurses, all the nurses over there at uh, Columbia or Presbyterian. For all the nurses over there at Columbia or New York Presbyterian, you can go ahead and squeeze you and your kids over there and whatnot for the single moms. Oh, look, $5,700 a month. I'm sure you can afford that and the children. Sure, you can squeeze all of those in. Marcus Garvey Park. Hey, ooh, $6,500 a month. Three bedroom, two bathroom, 1,500 square feet. Three bedrooms, two bathrooms. This is in Harlem, y'all. This is in Harlem. This is in Harlem. I did my documentary Gentrified. I tried to warn you about this half a decade ago. I was trying to warn you about it then. I was the only voice speaking. If you listen then, maybe you had time to prepare. Oh, look, 8,000 square feet. Four bedroom, two bath, 1,900 square feet. $8,400. That's in Harlem. Oh, look, a little more affordable here. $3,400. Right off of Amsterdam, I ain't going to say what I'm thinking. I'm not going to say what I'm thinking, but y'all know the neighborhood. That's all I'm going to say there. Y'all know the neighborhood. Ain't dissing nobody, but my people over there, you know the neighborhood. There's a reason that it's $3,400. You know the neighborhood. It is what it is. Maybe you'll do better over here for 10 G's. Don't like that? Ooh, look, 9.5 thousand. Look at that. A few blocks away, 9.5 thousand dollars. Four bedroom, three bath, 3,200 square feet. You can get it for damn near $10,000 a month. $10,000 a month. They basically want you to be a millionaire to live here off of Adam Clayton Powell Jr., Boulevard off of Frederick Douglass Boulevard. You see that? You living right off of Frederick Douglass Boulevard. What do you get for 10 G's a month on Frederick Douglass Boulevard? What do you get for 10 G's? Oh boy, look at this right here. A nice crowded view. This is myopic. You you can see the sun for three hours a day. For $10,000, you have a beautiful view of everybody else's stoop and the fire escapes. Lovely view. They're like, hey, we actually have a real kitchen in here in New York. That'll be another $1,500. Oh, look, the fireplace. It's the definition of cozy because you're take a look at how close that table is to the fireplace. You can get your third degree burns. Well, there's your bed. Oh, look, and your exercise bike right there. So in New York, they balling your your brick walls. Why stop there? Why stop with one room? If you can expand it, go ahead and throw your brick walls out there. Welcome to New York. 
on Frederick Douglass Boulevard, on Frederick Douglass Boulevard, off of Frederick Douglass Boulevard. That's what you can get for 10 G's in Harlem. That's what you can get. Now, I got young black people out here like, what am I going to do? Man, look here. These are the prices they throw in. By the way, Sugar Hill, I'm going to get to you in just a minute. Going to get to you in just a minute. Now, Amsterdam, my people in New York know Amsterdam is one of the major streets. It runs way, way, way long up there and whatnot. $4,500 a month for two bedroom, two bath. Two bedrooms, two bath. I guess you can sleep in one of the bathrooms if you run out of people there, I suppose. I suppose you can. 140th Street, $3,900, basically $4,000. Four bedroom, two bath, 1,500 square feet. Four bedrooms in 1,500 square feet. You must be standing up in one of them. Well, for the bath we're doing here, yeah, you damn sure nearly are. Take a look at this. Two tiles. Do you all see this? Two tiles. You have enough room for your feet to walk to the toilet. Two tiles. Do you see this beside the tub here? You have two tiles between the wall and the bathtub. Two tiles. Do you see that? You have enough room for your feet. You probably have, you basically have to enter the bathroom sideways. And they want every bit of $4,000. Here's one bedroom. If you dare call it that. There's another. Oh, look. I guess they figure one of more than one view would strike you there. All right. There's the kitchen. Um, if we dare call it that. There's the kitchen. They put up three pictures of the kitchen. They wanted you to know, hey, we in New York. We bought a new appliance or something. There's the kitchen, y'all. There's the kitchen. $38.95. Hundred and fortieth Street, four bedrooms, two baths. Bathroom number one, bathroom number two. Bathroom number one, bathroom number two. By Jackie Robinson Park. $3,600 $3,600 for a two bedroom, one bath, 1,280 square feet. 1,280 square feet on St. Nicholas Ave. Do you see this floor plan? Do you see this floor plan? This is like a brick shotgun house, and I'm from Louisiana. This right here says 950 square feet. I guess that's what it's covering there. Are they really counting all this blank area out here? Because this says 950 square feet. Oh boy, somebody's trying to be trying to be tricky. Somebody's trying to be tricky. Okay, it looks like they had enough room for the kitchen. We all know how this goes. If the kitchen is this big, that means the bathroom. Boy, look at that. There's enough room in the bathroom for one of your kids. I would not suggest trying to lay down in the bathtub, either because of bacteria or because your feet will be up on the wall. So be aware of that. Two bedrooms, one bathroom, and this is the one bathroom. Oh boy, they didn't really go out of their way to show the bedrooms. We all know what that means. Oh, why don't you get out there on the patio? Something like that. You have a wonderful view of all the walls around you. Okay. But it's 3,600, two bedroom, one bath. Hey, who wants to step right up and get some of this action? You know, Washington Heights used to be a reliable place. Back in the day, Washington Heights used to be a reliable place to get something cheaper and whatnot if you was willing to deal with it. Used to be a reliable place. Oh, look, $6,000. 
just south of Washington Heights, six thousand dollars, two bedrooms, two bathrooms, fifteen hundred square feet. I know what this means. They must have redid the flooring and they're going to charge you every bit for it. So I guess now it's your fault about the flooring. Come on outside and get another look at our brick walls here. Yeah, th this is wonderful. And we have outdoor seating. Yeah, you can look straight up and see the damn sky. This is like something out of Judge Dredd. This is like something out of Judge Dredd. Those mile spires or whatever. This is like something from, from the comic book series or the movie Judge Dredd. All you can see, you go outdoors and all you get is a wonderful view of the bricks next to you. Oh, hell, there's the kitchen. Kitchen looks pretty big, too, there, by New York standards. The kitchen is pretty large. We all know how this ends. We all know how this ends. Looking at that floor plan here. Okay, the kitchen looks pretty big, so we all know how this ends. It looks like it's more than one level. They got their washing machines stacked on top of each other. Oh, look, here's the bathroom. Have you all ever... People, do you see this bath? Do you see this? Do you see this? Folks, do you see this? What the hell? This is like a prison cell. This is like a prison cell. Do you see this? Ain't it's just a little hallway going to the toilet. On the left is the uh, the bath the bathtub takes up the whole left side and the vanity takes up the whole right side. Do you see this? If you slid a tray of food under the door, you'd be like, I'm in solitary confinement. Do you see this? Take a look at that. Do Okay. All right. $6,500 a month. Well, that was one bathroom. What about the other one? Oh boy. This is the other one. We were doing pretty good where we was at. We were actually doing pretty good over here. You don't want to know what's going on in the other one. Yeah, we, we was actually balling out before. We were actually doing pretty good. This is half a room. Where's the, this is the second bathroom. Where's the rest of it? Where, where's the rest of it? I don't know where it went. I do know where your money went. $6,500. $6,500. Take a look at this right here. Take a look out the window. You get a wonderful view of the brick concrete building next to you. You squeeze your kids up in here. This looks like the county jail. $6,500 a month. Oh, please tell me that this ain't the master bedroom. Folks, is the... is. Is the fireplace really sitting right there? Is that a fireplace sitting right next to the bed? Is this a fireplace sitting right next to the bed? Do you see this? Are my Do my humpty eyes deceive me? Is that a fireplace next to the bed? Okay, you can't make that a selling point. I suggest you don't crank it up. That's what I'm going to tell you. I suggest you don't crank it up. $6,500. Let's move on up here to Washington Heights. Oh, look, Little Dominican Republic. To all my Dominicans out there, Little Dominican Republic. Take a look how they live in. $5,300 a month for 1,300 square feet. And my folks up there, you know the neighborhood. I know the neighborhood. 
Ain't no need to talk about it. Three bedrooms, two baths. You see the floor plan, so you know where this is going. By the way, take a look at that. You can see the bedrooms. Where's the damn bathrooms on here? Yikes. I can see the bathrooms. All I got to say is yikes. Oh, boy. You know, they put this little, this is where the money went right here. Well, take a look. We've renovated the living room, man. You spent more on the damn furniture than anything else. What about the stuff we actually going to use? The kitchen and the bathrooms. Well, here we have one room over here, man. Look here. This is damn near a closet, but all right. This is our open floor concept. Uh, you must think I'm an open fool concept. What else you got? Here's a bedroom space. Your feet are damn near touching the curtains at the end of the room, but all right. They call them efficiency apartments. This is inefficient. Uh, okay, there's, folks, there's the kitchen. It looks like whoever made the bathroom for that last apartment we were looking at designed the kitchen for this one. Can you even open up the stove? Can you even let the door for the stove down enough? Can you even do that? Can you even open up the stove to be able to get something in there? Though there was a wash, a wind, um, a dishwasher on the other side. Can you even open it enough to get something in there or the cabinets? I'm looking at the refrigerator. I'm like, okay, man, look here. One person can go in the kitchen at a time. You got to take a number like the DMV. Well, we have another room here with your radiator. There's your other bedroom. Well, that's good. That one's got room in it because that's all you're going to get. Oh, look here again. If your feet come off the edge of the bed, you can unplug stuff with your damn toes on this socket by the wall. You can go ahead and do that. $5,300 a month. Oh, look, we found the bathroom. Oh, look, another spacious bathroom. What, where do they find these narrow ass tubs at? I ain't seen nothing like this at Home Depot or Lowe's. Where the hell are they getting these things at? Alibaba? They must be getting these things off of either Alibaba or Overstock.com. I have never seen narrow ass tubs like this. Looks like one of those crucibles you make your meltdown swords in. Where do, where do you find a bathtub this damn narrow? Where? Where they sell these at? I never seen it. I thought I seen everything. I never seen it. Oh, look. Here's the other bathroom. Y'all, do you see they got the toilet over here hidden behind the lettering? Do you see this? All they're showing you is the top of it. This is a closet. This is not a bathroom. This is a closet. Do you see the foolery going on here? $5,300 a month, 1,300 square feet, and you all the way up here in Little Dominican Republic. Oh, boy. $5,000 a month, five bedrooms, 1,500 square feet. People, what in the hell is this? Is this a washing machine next to the stove, between the stove and the refrigerator? Maybe I'm seeing it wrong. Maybe I don't know what that is. Maybe you all can correct me on that. Well, Jason, you understand this New York thing here. It's not really a washing machine. Okay, if it's not a washing machine, it damn sure looks like one. What's going on here? We 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 freestyling. What are they doing? I mean, is this some newfangled type? What is that? Is that because there's a stove over here? What is that? Someone tell me what this is. Someone tell me what this is. I see a stove. I see a refrigerator. I see a microwave. Which is this one of them newfangled dishwashers? What is this? We making dishwashers with circular fronts on it. It looks like a damn washing machine, clothes washing machine. Um, 
come on now. This is supposed to be a damn kitchen. There's a refrigerator. There's a stove. There's a washing machine. Uh, one of these things does not belong here. Folks, is it just me? How many of y'all got a washing machine in the kitchen? How many of y'all got a washing machine in the kitchen is my point. How many of you have a washing machine in your kitchen? Give me a thumbs up emoji for all the people who have a washing machine in their kitchen. If you do, if you have never seen a washing machine in your kitchen before, give me a thumbs down emoji and hit the likes button. We're behind on my likes right now. If you have never seen a washing machine in a kitchen before, give me a thumbs down emoji and hit the likes button. If you ain't never seen nothing like this in your life. Let me tell y'all right now, this is a first for me. I've seen a lot of things in the kitchen. I I've never seen a washing machine in the kitchen before. Them Dominicans is living rough up there. Oh, look, people. Another one? Is this next to the damn shower? What are we doing? Folks, what are we doing? People. They spent all this money on renovation. You got another machine next to the damn shower. Who designed this? Who did the layout here? For $5,000 a month. Oh, please tell me this is not one of the bedrooms. Please tell me that this closet is not one of the bedrooms. Tell me you don't think this is going to be a bedroom. That's only going to work with little children. So every other thing in here is built for Peter Pan. Oh, what is this? Now what? Now what is this? What is this? Looks like the damn day's in and you're going to pay $5,000 a month in New York City, $5,000 a month. Then you come up here to Inwood and whatnot. So my people know where you're at and whatever and you cross over that bridge. Okay. We know what happens in the Bronx. What happens in the Bronx stays in the Bronx. We'll take a look at one more here. Just one more. So you're going by the Har over here by the Harlem River. You're north of the little Dominican Republic. This is $7,000 a month. Eight bedrooms, four bathrooms for $7,000 a month. There's your kitchen. Oh, is this again? There's a refrigerator in the dryer in the... New York, what are y'all doing? People, I th th just what the Dominicans are. Is this a Dominican thing? I need some of my Dominicans to let me know. Is this the, is this the get down? Is this like a Dominican thing? You you wash your clothes right next to the refrigerator? Is is this a time saving mechanism? Is this a time saving mechanism? I'm just saying. So we throw some dirty drawers in the washing machine and then start dinner. To my Dominicans, this, this must be a time-saving mechanism. The stove is over here, the refrigerator is right there, and the washer and dryer are right next to the refrigerator. People, in all my born days, I'm from Louisiana. I, we, we've never had the washing machine anywhere near the kitchen. In the chat room, you're right. This is random as hell. It's just, okay, there's a space. There's no code that says we can't. There's no code that says we can't do it, so... Get her in. Get her done. Oh, look. Another spacious bedroom. Spiral staircase. Looks like an M.C. Escher drawing. All right. Oh, look. More spacious bedrooms. You got eight of them literally charging you almost a thousand dollars per bedroom, but okay, <sighs> here comes the bathrooms. Here we go. Cell block one. People, do you see how this bathroom, take a look how this edge over here 
curves back. Do you see this? This is a shower that gives you diminishing returns. Do you see how this edge over here curves back towards the uh, other side of the shower stall? Do you see that? And somebody tell me that this thing has something that, that blocks the water from hitting the toilet. Because I'm looking to see, okay, I don't see a shower rod up here. I don't see a curtain rod up here. And I don't think I see glass either. So, people, they are just doing anything. They're just doing anything. Let's take a look at the other one and see if it gets better. No, it don't. Hey, I need some doors in between this shower and the toilet, y'all. I need some doors in between these showers and these toilets. And plus the whole thing is white. It's like something from the movie Equilibrium. It's everything's all gray in here. Is this supposed to look clean? Because it just looks depressing. $7,000 a month. Seven G's. And this is the affordable part of Manhattan when you get up in Harlem and north of Harlem. This is the affordable part. Sugar Hill, $6,500. That's the affordable part. Jason, you're doing too much. You're doing too much. You're doing too much. Nigga, I'm doing the most. Let me go ahead and take you down to Miami. Oh boy, you thought I had just one for you. Hell no. Let me take you down to Miami. Hey, we over here off of Biscayne Boulevard. Oh, damn. That ain't going to work. $8,000, $10,000 a month. All them chicks who be getting online talking about they live in Miami. They live in Miami. Ma'am, you took pictures on the beach in Miami. Your ass lives over here. Take a look at the Miami Art, Art District. Well, here we got one right here. This $3,900 here. It's not too far from Biscayne and all that. It's not too far from that. Wonder what you get in Miami, West 30, Northwest 33rd Street in Miami. Boy, do y'all see this? They don't even show you nothing. It's $3,900 for 1,290 square feet. And the only thing they offer is a picture of a bed. Do you see that? It's a picture of a bed. This is all you get? Let me see what the hell they got going on out here. Oh, hell no. Oh, this looks like where they dump the bodies. Do you see this? This is the house right here. For sale. Okay, well, some investor got a hold of it. This is the house and this is the block. Three thousand, four thousand dollars a month. Four thousand dollars a month in Miami. Four grand. Yeah, Rick Ross didn't tell y'all about this part. Four grand in Miami. Four grand. 1,290 square feet. We're not talking about in Brickell. We're not talking about downtown. 4,000 square, uh, 4,000 G's. Four bedrooms, one bath, and they won't even show you anything. They won't even show you, show it to you. They're like, nigga, if you know where 33rd Street is, you already know what you're getting into. Four thousand dollars. Take it or leave it. And that's if you're lucky. Here is fifty four hundred dollars. I mean, we're not at the beach. But boy, they like, okay, we built up ours over here. Uh, that will be fifty four hundred dollars, please. Yes, if you want to live in something that looks decent, uh, yeah. And this looks like a damn play set. So these are not even real pictures. So they must not, I don't even know if they're even open yet. 1,200 square feet. Do you see this? 1,200 square feet from $5,400 to $7,500. Let's try our luck down here. $2,700. Okay, that seems a little bit more fair. Wait a minute. Um... 
excuse me. Um, this looks modest. 1600 square feet. You must be counting the whole lot. You must be counting the entire lot. Oh, look, the kitchen. Um, they're still working on the kitchen. What is this going on over right here? What is this? What is this? Is Are you supposed to squeeze a refrigerator up under here? What is this? 2,700 square feet. Well, at least it's in a nice neighborhood, I suppose. At least we got that going for us. Um, shucks. Oh, man. Okay. The house across the street. Okay. Left a thing laying down. All righty. Okay. Well, <clears throat> we found the affordable one. No parking. All right. We found the affordable one. We found that. $2,700 a month in Miami. We found what $2,700 a month will get you. Oh, look, Little Havana. And by the way, this is outside of Little Havana and whatnot. Take a look over here. $6,000. Four bedrooms, three baths, 1,700 square feet. This is $6,000. This in Miami is $6,000 a month. You are not in a posh neighborhood. You're not with manicured lawns and all that. The folks across the street, they're going to, I mean, it's a cool house and everything. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like this is the Beverly Hills of Miami across the, being across the street from this house costs $6,000 to be in this house. That's Miami. I could keep going. Notice I'm not taking you out into the water and whatnot. Hey, find something a little bit more affordable. $3,000 a month. It's $29.89. They got just a couple of pictures on here. Two bedrooms, two baths. It says 6,100 square feet. That doesn't, something's not right there. You know, that bathroom doesn't even look close to that. They took their design cues from New York. Another set of narrow tubs. They must have all been selling. Got a hell of a deal on those. Oh, look. Refrigerator right next to the stove. Okay. Nigga, you could open every appliance in here without moving your feet. Do you realize that? You could open the refrigerator, the stove, and work the uh, the um kitchen sink without ever moving your feet. You could stand in the middle of the floor and open everything without ever having to make a step. That's just how cramped this thing is. And they want $3,000 a month for it. $3,000 a month on Glen Royal Parkway. You know full damn well if something calls itself royal, it ain't. $4,000 a month. Three bedrooms, two and a half baths. They redid the floors. Looks wacky and crazy. Here's one bathroom. Here's one bathroom. Step right up. You'll love these countertops. It looks like something the Joker would design. Oh, look, here's another bathroom. They got their feng shui going on over here. Oh, they got a damn stand for the toilet thing. They didn't even have one in stand for the toilet paper holder. They didn't even have something installed in the walls. So, yeah, this is no frills. $4,200 a month. Let me say that again. $4,200 a month. $4,200. $4,200. And that's in Miami. That's in Miami. Now, I could keep going here, but I was trying to make a point about this. Coral Gables. We can go down the list. And if I zoom out, we can keep going. This is what you have to deal with now. 
This is what you have to deal with. And by the way, we can go to Atlanta if y'all really just want to. I'm going to spare you Atlanta. I'm going to spare you Atlanta. I think you all can probably guess. We'll just skip Atlanta, okay? We'll just skip Atlanta. My folks in Atlanta will be like, yeah, why don't we just bypass that? The point I'm trying to make here is that if you're a female out here today in particular, if you're a single mom who's been wasting the last 20 years doing dumb stuff, telling dudes kiss your ass, racking up a bunch of children because you're dealing with unresolved emotional issues that you could not be bothered to address. If you told yourself that, well, all I got to do is work harder, get another job, get another degree, it'll put me back in debt again, but get another job and get another degree. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. Maybe that man was trying to tell you not to make stupid mistakes. Well, he ain't going to tell me what to do. Okay, well, now you don't have to worry about that. Because here's the point I was trying to make to you here. These numbers are coming whether you're ready or not. These numbers on your screen are coming whether you are ready to handle this or whether you're not. You're going to have to deal with this whether you're ready or you're not. And when you were young and nubile and looking a certain way and you could tell people to kiss your ass and tell men what you wasn't going to do and you could make suicidal decisions and feel good about it. Yeah, it's one thing when you're young and you can make dumb suicidal decisions to feel good about it. The years start catching up to you and now the numbers are catching up to you. And I, sh- I started with New York, but I wanted to show you folks, by the way, the numbers aren't too far off when you take a look at D.C., Atlanta, Chicago, They are quickly catching up is what I'm telling you. And you are young women in some cases, but a lot of you are middle-aged women. And this is a hell of a burden to have on you now. This is a hell of a burden to be carrying at this point in your life. And you got to carry this by yourself you have to do this on your own you're going to have to shoulder this go scooping into your lifetime earnings you got to carry this solo To the young females out there, I want you to remember something. These old hoes are suicidal. The chicks who got the kids and wouldn't stop being bullheaded and stubborn and stupid. Let me tell you, they they already know their time is already up. They already know they're done. They already know they're done and they're through. That's why they sit up here telling you all kinds of stupid stuff to see if you can fall for the same damn thing. They already know that that's a wrap for them. They already know it. You can argue with a man, but you can't argue against mathematics. You can argue with a man, but you can't make the landlord play along with your delusion. You can't do that. Let me explain something to you. Women don't like to jump up and move from one damn city to another unless her life is completely chaotic. A woman wants to get in one place and settle down. She's not up for this nomad treatment like that. She's not up for that. And right now you have watched that the cost of everything has gone up by 25 to 50%, but your income that you were counting on isn't following. That ain't moving. 
And all the stuff that folk were telling you here before is all coming down. And what I'm doing is showing you the numbers. And I want to tell you one more thing. When I told you years ago, oh, no, this is the new normal. I meant what I said. You can go take a look at the numbers all across Texas. You can take a look at the numbers all across Florida. Because it used to be we only talked about New York and California. Now we're talking about Texas and Florida and D.C. People, it's not no joke now. It's not no joke. That's the point I'm trying to tell you. This is a hell of a thing, especially if you made bad decisions five, six years ago. Now you're married to that decision. Retirement. What the hell is that? You can't afford to retire. Not now you can't. You can't afford to retire. You're not going to be able to do that. We're talking about math. People, I've never said what I said because I had an opinion. I've said what I said because, by the way, there's a math behind it. There's mathematics behind it, and you can't debate it or negotiate it. It either works or it doesn't. Either you've made the right decisions and everything comes together, or you will work until you die. Those are your options. You either made the right decisions a long time ago. You either planned correctly. You either got yourself in good position or you will continue working until the day you perish. The math doesn't allow for anything else. There are plenty of times out here where folk are going to sit up here and tell, try to tell you something different, but it will not be that way. This isn't the time for fantasizing. There are a bunch of folks whose lives right now are in complete shambles because of that. They're in complete shambles, and now the old folks who got you into this, none of them are here to help get you out of it. Now, there are some folks out there who want to try to second guess the numbers. Denial isn't just a river in Egypt is the point. It's not just a river in Egypt. However, you're in luck. The telephone lines are now open. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933, your personal access code to the program that laid the foundation upon which all of these other YouTube channels, copycat, from the original, this is the place. If you've been instructed by my mods to call in, you have two minutes to be on the line. Since you've had so much to say in the chat rooms, now this is your opportunity to say it where everybody else can hear it as well. So go ahead and give us a call here, and that's not a request, that's an order. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Uh, you definitely want to go ahead and call in and join us for that. As we are discussing here tonight, the women can't afford to live in America. They can't afford to live here. A long list of mistakes now are catching up. People, the math is going bad. I have talked to three women this week, three women this week, who are asking me about moving back in with a dude. And it's like, oh boy, I hope the feelings aren't too hard out there. And that's for them. What do you think is going to happen to Generation Z and the Millennials? To the Millennials, don't, don't be as dumb as your mamas were. Don't be as dumb as them. Because you don't have the runway anymore to sit up here and piss nobody off at you. You don't have that runway. You have to be thinking about how you're going to cash out of the game. How are you going to retire if you can retire? The bottom line is, simply put, you cannot do it by yourself. We are returning to an economic paradigm that far more closely resembles your grandparents and great grandparents. A modest house or what for today qualifies as a modest place to live. That's where we're at now. That's where we're going. And it's going to equate to that. 
I'm going to go ahead and open up the phone lines here for you here now. But before I do, I want to go ahead and thank everyone who has contributed to support tonight's program here on either uh, PayPal, Cash App, or Super Chat. So thank you very much for that. We appreciate that. Uh, big shout out here to Divine Feminine. Thank you very much. She's single-handedly trying to buy me a laptop. So thank you very much. I appreciate that, Divine Feminine. We'll put in your side chick application. Um, Kassan Kelly, thank you very much here as well. Talisha, I see you. Jay Freeman and everybody else who's contributed on the Super Chat. Thank you very much for that. We appreciate that. Let me go ahead and see here. You all can go ahead and start calling in. Um, Let me get the Zoom up and going too while I'm at it. While I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take a few phone calls here. You're inclined to go ahead and give us a call early as opposed to late. You know how that goes. Let's go ahead and get called from area code 281. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Tony from Houston, Texas. Right. Tony from Houston, what's on your mind? Jason, uh, you are the best at breaking down the hard, cold economic facts uh, to African Americans in this country. No one does it better than you. Uh, I've called in before. I'm 66 years old. I'm, I'm probably the oldest that calls. Uh, I am retiring. I've already retired in February. Uh, and I have seen some ups and downs in the economy that uh, you wouldn't believe. But you would. But the people listening to you who are much younger than me would not believe. I remember the oil embargo. Look it up. The oil embargo of the 1970s when cars could not purchase gas in America. I remember seeing all of these things, but this is the worst that I have seen it. This is the worst. Uh, I can only say for the young people and the single mothers and the women who have not locked down a man, I wouldn't want to be you for all the tea in China. The government is broke. Section 8 doesn't pay anymore, so you'll be homeless. Uh, the formula industry has no formula, so WIC can't feed your babies. Food stamps cannot keep up with food inflation, so you will be even worse than you were before in the food desert. Uh, it gets, and, of course, the car that you have that's already seven years old, can you afford to now fill up the tank? No, you can't. If you, your children are going to have to, uh, you can't, the, 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 if you have the Internet, you have to keep it so they'll learn at home. But if you can't afford it, they'll have to go to school and risk whatever goes on there. It's going to be a madhouse. If you're a woman, you better lock down a man, and you better do it quick. If you're a man, you have your choice. You have your pick of any woman you want. And if she doesn't matter whether she has a GED or a PhD, they're all the same. I started my investments well over 40 years ago. I'm very happy to say I've been blessed. I'm enjoying the fruits of those now. My wife and I have 30 years. Women don't want to put in the work. When I met her 30 years ago, she didn't know she'd still be with me. She's reaping the benefits of a of our financial, my financial investments. We're going to the Maryland Shore at the end of the month, Baltimore, Washington. We'll spend five days eating, drinking, and spending cash. You know, that's the benefit of getting the hell out of it. You got it right. I, I, I love it. I love it. You're not supposed to get in the games. You and I'm a black the damn man, by field the way, all my damn wife is year. black as well. I, I know, though. But you, you're not supposed to get in the games so you can run around in circles for the rest of your damn life. You're supposed to get in the game yeah. to get the hell out of it. That's it. That's exactly right. So you want to cashed out. Yes. She cashed out with me over 30 years ago. I had no idea I'd still be with her. But uh, we're doing very, very well. As far as the gas prices go, I have a 2008 Mercedes Benz. It, it looks and runs brand new. I can throw $100 in there. No, that doesn't bother me. Uh, well... I can throw $100 in mine. This bothers the hell out of me. So you know, clear, clearly you have a bit more peace of mind about this than I do. Let me tell you. Well, I don't you, think I'll ever make a lot more driving than I do. <laughs> well, look here. I do a lot more filling tank, but that, that, that doesn't, I, I wouldn't care if I don't drive for the rest of the year. That $100 is still hurting me. So.
So <laughs> let me tell you, boy. I'll be I'm, honest with you. I'm thinking about getting I, me a I Hyundai. Really, I mean, I don't mind now. I don't mind now. My home is my home is appreciated so much in value. If I was, I'm in Houston, by the way. I mean, uh, my home is, and I owe very little on it. My my mortgage is so is so low. Uh, I really don't even want to say because <laughs> with those rents that are going on, people are like, look, I'm, who is this guy? But it's so low. It's a shame. I'm going to go get me a Kia Rio. That's what I'm going to go do. Cause <laughs> see what I can save on that. Well, thank thank you very much for giving us a call point. tonight here, Tony. I didn't do tonight's program here to floss or to show off or anything like that. I did it because, damn it, this is a warning. This is a warning is what I'm trying to tell you. To folk who are out here and whatnot. First of all, this didn't work out well for your mamas and your grandmamas. It didn't work out well for them. And as you are getting older, you are not going to want to be sitting here fighting with the same damn stuff all the time. You're going to want your life to get easier. You're going to want to know there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And this will be easier for men than it will be for women. Men can be migratory men can run from one place to another a woman has a short window of time to become a mother if she's going to do that she doesn't have the ability to sit up here and 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 throw 20 damn years in the tank you see the problem is you have females out here talking as if they're men well let me go get my career started And then I'll start a family once my career is solidified. That's not female thinking. That's male thinking. That's masculine calculation. We make the calculus that we'll we'll get our finances together and get our job solidified. And then we start a family. That's the way a man thinks. We have the ability to do that. We have the ability to make that happen. The ladies don't have that ability. They don't have that ability. Okay, I see you there on Zoom. Is that Atisha? Yes, it's me, Atisha. Hello, Atisha. And what is on your mind? Well, I just wanted to say that I thank you. I really enjoyed your program, but um, I think that there is going to be an alternative to this because I'm already hearing about women doing this. So this is what I'm hearing. It's like group of women in like their thirties, forties, really like their forties and like the single women, they're like living with their friends. So it'll be a group of like single girlfriends, like, all in their 40s and like they all like buy a house together and they live okay well, let they're me like find, life partners let me find what okay that there's a scary term Boy. i've heard them yeah they're like life partners well i mean certainly you're starting to hear that kind of thing occur but isn't that uh, let me find it here teacher how old are you 29 okay do you like living around other females no i don't like living around other people Okay, but let's start about other females, though. No, I don't. Okay. Can you give me two good reasons why you find it to be undesirable to be around other women like yourself? Don't don't you aspire to the sisterhood? They just kind of are a little annoying. And contrary to popular belief, they're very messy. And it's just like... Why do I need to live with a woman? Like I could just live with a man. It's like a failure. It's like a huge failure. Like, no, I don't want to live with a bunch of women. Well, it's not like a huge failure. It is a huge failure. And let me explain to you why. Because women don't support other women. That's the problem. You see, that's the issue with Valentine's Day or Galentine's Day. Women love Valentine's Day because a man is going to pay much, much more for a woman than other women will. A man will buy you a thousand dollar gift. You know full well you will never see a thousand dollar gift from one of your girlfriends ever in life. They wouldn't pitch in a thousand dollars on your funeral expenses. 
So you know that's not going to happen. So of course, being around the men is a far more desirable place to be because you're going to be valued a lot more by a man than you will ever be valued by another female. So there's the first downside of it. The other downside of it is you can live with other women, but how much labor are other women going to do for you? Inversely, how much labor are you willing, how much physical manual labor, Atisha, are you willing to do for other females? Not at all. Okay, so if she needs to get groceries out of her car and she says, hey, Atisha, come down and help me get these bags out. No. Mm Mm-mm. Not going to happen. You know, The Golden Girls was a very nice sitcom back in the day. It was very funny, but you know, those are situations that The Golden Girls sitcom never handled. It never showed Rose and, and, and Dorothy bringing in groceries, fixing plumbing. I don't remember anything like that. Moving furniture. You know, it doesn't show any of those kind of things. It just shows them they get up in the morning, they come to the kitchen table and crack jokes on each other all day. It doesn't handle any of the other life necessities you have. The bottom line is there's nothing fun about a female living with a bunch of other females. There's nothing fun about that. They're catty. They're competitive in a negative way. And if anything's going right in your, I don't see how you could live communally with them because if anything's going right in your life, What's what's going to stop them from trying to undermine you? Nothing. Okay, let's just say, for example, you have a house with four females, right? One of y'all is going to get a man at some point. One of you is going to be spending time with a dude. Somebody's going to break down and be like, man, damn this. I'm going to lay up with somebody at least once a week. When the other females find out, the, all they're going to be thinking is she's having hella fun and we're sitting here looking at each other. That's what they're going to be thinking. And they don't, they don't, women do not uh, celebrate each other's happiness like that. That's the problem. Let me find out here, Tisha, do you have any children? Uh Uh-uh. No, I don't. None at all. (laughs) I don't know. She's laughing. So I don't, is is that, is that you got none? You got none you claiming? No, you was about to start questioning, questioning me. And I was like, uh uh-oh, but no, I don't have children. Don't, don't be scared. (laughs) She's, but do you have you don't have any children? You don't have any children that you claim in. I've never been pregnant. Oh, okay. That's the next question I was going to ask. By the way, have you been pregnant and something of an unfortunate nature happened to the to the child there? So, okay. All right, everybody. She's like, all right. I didn't I didn't put him in the wood chipper. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Oh, where do you live at? I'm in the DMV. Oh, oh. I should say Maryland. Okay, you're in Maryland, and um. You're single up there? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I got issues. I don't know. <laughs> it's a reason why. I, I just, it's definitely a reason. Atisha. I've called in before, yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> yeah. glad you have. You needed to call <laughs> back here. You all can see she's got a brilliant <laughs> smile on her, but uh, Atisha, do dudes call you crazy? If I like them. Yeah, it depends how much I like them, but yeah. Good Lord. I've been called that before. They don't like that stuff. Hmm. Fellas, word of warning. The cute, crazy chicks don't get them a a Mercedes truck, a navigator, or an escalator, anything big they can run you (laughs) over in. From personal experience, I will tell you, it doesn't end well. Crazy chicks are all, they are dynamite. For certain things, but they are dynamite in other areas, too. So that's the problem because she's 29 years old. She's got no kids and no husband. Ma'am, you do realize that the clock is running out. I know. You want to pay all these gas prices I've been showing you tonight? You want to keep paying them by yourself? No, I want to be married. I want to be settled down, but I just I just can't. not, Not to say I can't do it. It's just it hasn't happened for me yet. So. It hasn't happened. And why hasn't it happened? You're going to tell me that you have not met at least two fellas up there who have been willing to take your ass off the market. Not seriously. no. Whoa. OK. What, who's who is the problem? Them or you? It usually it's me. I'll be honest. It's me. I'm the problem. Man. I gotta be the problem if I'm single. You're 29 so. years old. It's the year 2022. I mean, how much longer are you going to? dance around out here well you know i thought i'd be married by now i thought i'd be married at like 27 but no it hasn't it hasn't happened 
Did you grow up with your father? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What does he tell you to do? Well, my father's passed, but he when before he passed, he wanted me to have, have a family. He's like, why don't you want to get married? Do you want to get married? Or don't you want to settle down? He would tell me those things, yeah. Do you? I do. Mm -hmm. Well, you start off by saying that you don't like living with women or men. I don't like having roommates. I should say that. Okay, so you you don't mind being with somebody that you're involved with, but you don't want yeah, to just have not a other people mm -hmm. around you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, have you dated anything other than have you dated anything other than black men? No, and oh, that, that no came on, real hard. Now, do you need a moment to think it over? No, I, no, all that's going on with in the world, I don't even want to be with someone non-black. All the stories that I'm hearing, just mm. no, I can't do it. Okay, well, like I say, fellas, she's single, she's childless. Red flags are all over this damn thing. Let me tell you right now. So, um, I, I bet you she's. What size do you wear? Eight. Okay. You see, everything is in place, but we all, men know, if she's made it this far and she's not married, forget the kids thing, she's not married, fellas are saying, hey, there's a problem. There is a problem. She is dark skinned and looking, not looking like Lizzo out here, and yet they hadn't taken her off the market. That's a problem. I'm worried that at 29, you're going to be okay being by yourself. Let me think about this for a few moments. Do you have a profession? I do. Yeah. What, what do you do? I work for a consulting firm. Okay. I'm a good job. I'm glad to hear that about how much you make a year. Well, I don't want to tell my business. Okay. Because I got family members. They might be watching and asking me for money. Okay. So. Well, they're going to ask you for money anyway. So that's just about, they know you're employed and they're not. So they would know if you was living on stimulus checks. Um, are you <laughs> living in, now you say you live in Maryland though. Are you living in Baltimore? No. Or just closer to, okay. Prince George's. All right. Well, um, my thing about that is at this point right now, 29 years old, how long you've been working in the same field? Well, it's been three years. Okay. Three years. Yes. So since she was 26 years old. Yeah. And how much do you have in savings for retirement now? Mm, like in your I have 401k. Accounts, I have uh, like three different accounts. So in my 401k, it's around 20. I've been saving for like five or six years my 401k okay here's my issue and then i'm gonna let you go you're 29 years old otherwise you've got a lot of those things in place although obviously there's probably some attitude and coachability issues that kind of make fellas really hesitant to say let me make a permanent investment because he's going to be tied to you and whatever those issues are for the rest of his days and he's got to make sure he can live with that Here's what you have to live with. I'm very glad that you have a nice job and everything, and I certainly hope that things go well. But that's going to be severely impacted if you have to carry this monster by yourself. You're 29 years old. When would you like to retire? Now. Okay. I hate working. And I, I work from home. I haven't, I've worked from home the last two years. And, I, and it's a great situation, but I just don't even like working. Like, then it's not a great situation. Because the only the only thing that has changed is, well, I don't have to commute to work. But the bottom line is what you're finding out is the commute is actually marginal. That's the problem. It's like, well, I don't have to drive to work, but it's not going to change what you're doing. And eventually they're going to get rid of that, by the way. They're eventually okay. going to need everybody to come back where they are because they need to be that people are not at home because they're more productive. They're at home because it's more convenient. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's best for the employer and he's going to do what's best for him. And what's best for them is to have everybody there where they can look over your shoulder and make sure you're doing what they want you to do, how they want you to do it. Because the bottom line is you're less productive at home. Is you, you like it, but he's not getting the most out of it. I bring this up simply to say at 29 years old here, she wants to retire now. Uh, it's not going to happen. You're going to have to put in at least another 25, 30 years. Because you have $20,000 right now. Um, I won't make you say the number, but I am going to say, is it less? Th are you making less than six figures? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. With that, are you making less than 75000 Okay. With that being the case, that's not bad, but you have no children, which means you're probably paying the max in taxes. So you're going to be paying around 25%. 
since you can't really make any deductions of any significance. You're trying to save up and you're almost 30 years old. Let's just say you're going to work until you're 60. That's another 30 years. Let's just say, like, let's just say you work like. until you're 60. Here's the thing. If you only have $20,000 in the bank, let me find out here. Are you living the life that you want to live right now? Minus a husband, yeah. Okay, so you're saying that you're driving the car you like to drive. Of all the cars that are out there, you are dr currently driving the one. No. Okay, then you're not living the life you'd like to live. The shoes that you have on your feet, are those the best of, of everything you could have? This, this is the, these are the ones right here. I love them, and I would keep these the rest of my life. Okay. Yeah. How many time? How many days of vacation time would you like to have a year? Three hundred and sixty-five. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, what what would you like to have as a minimum? Four weeks. Okay, so that's one month. What would you like to be able to do when you do that? Would you like it to be a staycation, or would you like that to be a vacation? Vacation international. Okay. So that's going to be a few thousand dollars there. There's a reason why I'm bringing these things up. Whenever I ask young women who are working about their life, they usually tell me they're very happy with it. And that's good to hear, but they're not projecting. Because like right now, the next question I usually ask is, would you like to be driving the same car seven years from now that you're driving today? Now, if you own a Mercedes S-Class and in seven years you would like to have a new S-Class, that's one thing. Would you like to have the new version of the car you're currently driving seven years from now? Uh, yeah. Okay, so no, the, car, the car... I want an S-Class. No, 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 no. Do you currently own an S-Class? Oh, no. Okay, that's what I mean. So whatever car you're driving right now, would you like to have the 2029 version of that car? If I tell you that's the only one you're going to be able to buy, you will not be able to buy anything else. You will only be able to get the 2029 version of the car you're currently driving. Would you be okay with that being your life? No. Thank you. And that's smart because what it says is you want your life to get better. What you're doing at 29 is what you need to be doing at 29. I haven't asked you what you're driving yet, but what you're doing at 29 is what you need to be doing at 29. But you want your life to be better at 39 than it is at 29. You don't want it to be the same thing. You want to have nicer things and start enjoying the fruits of your labor. That's going to be very, very hard for your generation to do. That's going to be extremely hard. You're dealing with a dollar that right now is worth about a 30th of what my parents' dollar was worth when they were your age. And the cities have never been more expensive and the inflation has never been more crushing. What I'm telling you is you can't do it by yourself. Not because you're not ambitious enough or hard-headed enough. It's because the math won't work. This is oh, mad. I know I can't. I, I know I can't. Because the cost of all these things is increasing by 25%, but your income is only increasing by 2%. And that's the problem. So if these things are going to work, you have to partner up with somebody. And the sooner the better, because you lose leverage every day that passes. You lose your leverage for the man that would be your best option. And then next thing you know, you end up and you're 35 and you're scrambling for whoever is left. And it's like, by then they know, oh, she's 35 with no 35 and never been married. We know she's taking what she can get. So that's the only reason why I bring that up is because it's very easy to lose sight of that. It's very easy to lose track of that, especially in this environment. You're working and quote unquote, taking care of yourself and you're doing great probably for a 29 year old. How about a 33 year old mother of three? Yeah, that's not enough. And the reason why I say that is because when you retire, if you're not, if the amount of income that you make right now is not giving you the life you want to coast on for the rest of your life, then if you retire and your retirement income is $70,000 a year, you've already said it's not enough in 2022. How will it be enough in 2052? And it wasn't enough in 2022. 
So something's got to change between here and there. So either get your employer to pay you three times as much, or you have to prioritize partnering with someone with some competence. And that's the reason we bring that up. So fellas, um, her name is Atisha. She is young and single and ready to mingle. She has been to the orthodontist. She is ready to get her life right. <laughs> so if you wish to reach out to her, I can put y'all together for the low, low price of, well, never mind. She's gainfully employed, so she is ready to be a working kept woman. So if you're up there in that Maryland area, keep an eye out for her. Are you taking side check applications, Jason? Uh, 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 well, well, Divine Feminine is listening right now, so I don't want to get. Oh, man. Yeah, she, you, you caught me on the wrong night. <laughs> you caught me on the wrong night. Divine Feminine, you, this is what I mean, y'all. It's never the right time. They, they show up, but never at the right time is, is the problem. Divine Feminine probably knows where my truck is parked at and everything. She's <laughs> There'll be a note on the windows. Excuse me, you taking too many applications. <laughs> we'll do a cattle call. Keep your eyes okay. and ears open. But thank you very much for checking in with us this year tonight. I... They are going to learn here, folks. They are going to learn. To the young ladies listening out there, I am trying to do you a favor. I am trying to do you a favor. At some point, you want to sit down. And that's okay. That's all right. But at some point, you want to sit down. And that's perfectly fine. You got to make those steps early, though. By the way, I do give priority to Zoom callers. So if you call on Zoom... Don't play around and you'll get banned, but definitely I give priority to Zoom callers. So if you want to give us a call on Zoom, go ahead and do that. In the meantime, let me go ahead and get the telephone lines. Let me get call of Mary code 470. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, uh, this is uh, Michael from Atlanta. Michael from Jordan. Atlanta. What's on your mind? Uh, hey, um, great program as well. Um, I've actually meaning to call in on your last program because um had kind of an economic question, but um, this program actually covered it, so um, that was really interesting, actually. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask uh, to kind of keep the program going. Um, I saw something on ABC Tampa Bay. Uh, they had a show or a show there, and they said um, a lot of single moms are getting priced out of that area just due to the um, the housing, the rents going up and whatnot. And um, they're actually forming like these convents of single moms working, like living together, um, kind of like your previous caller said, um, you know, just really, really concerning, honestly. Um, so I wanted to ask kind of um, like, like you said, if you're a guy and you really shouldn't be dealing with a single mom, except for the obvious reasons, you know, just for your financial and your mental health. So what would you suggest a woman in that position to do in that case if you know she she, she really unqualified for a guy kind you're of talking what about, she had to do. You're talking about a woman who is a single mom already. Yeah. Or yeah, or and the ones that are single moms are the ones that are kind of getting there too. They kinda of have that lifestyle and attitude and whatnot to match. Okay. Here's the problem. The reason why you usually can't do anything to help single mothers is because they are fundamentally broken and they're fundamentally broken in ways that you're not really going to be able to resolve. You're dealing with narcissism. You are dealing with severe need issues. You are dealing with in many cases, uh, borderline personality disorder. And I'm serious bipolarism. I'm dead serious. That tends to be a chronic issue. So with that being the case, you know, that, that, that's a problem. So it's not like the, the children are a result of something else. They're a result of deeper issues and those deeper issues, if they're not resolved and they are usually not, that's the problem. How do you resolve those deeper issues? Because that's going to be there, whether she has the children or not, if she's self-centered, she's reckless, 
She's irresponsible. She's undisciplined. She's hard-headed. She's stubborn. She will not be led. She cannot be coached. She's willing to make permanently damaging decisions. There's a reason why single moms and student loan debt go hand in hand. There's a reason why single moms and student debt go hand in hand. Single moms and consumer debt go hand in hand. Single moms and credit card debt go hand in hand. There's a reason for that. They're not mutually exclusive. You find a single mom and you will find financial lack of discipline, personal lack of discipline. Why do you think the fist fight and everything else happens? They, they go hand in hand. So you'd have to resolve that. If the woman were willing to resolve it and if she were able to do it in a timely fashion, you know, while she still looks halfway worth a damn, she might be able to negotiate a deal. She might be able to. The problem is usually life has to beat them down and break them down. And by the time they're finally beaten and battered into submission, there are no buyers anymore. By the time she's willing to accept that she is the problem, by the way, the, with the previous caller here, maybe I, sh maybe, I, I, maybe I should let her submit her side chick application because at least for the single moms, because she was willing to say, I'm the problem. When's the last time you yeah. heard a female period say that? And you don't hear single moms say that at all. <laughs> they, you don't ever hear them sit up here and say this. They get on Jerry Springer. They get on Love and Hip Hop. They are sitting up here just all their problems are hanging off of them and clanking around like pots and pans. And they'll sit there and tell you there's nothing wrong. Everybody else is the issue. That's the problem. So yeah. you, you really wouldn't be able to... Yeah. That you would have to resolve if you could get her to resolve those attitude and personal and mental and emotional issues. If you could resolve that, it'd be different. Yeah, absolutely. You broke it down, and um, yeah, like you said, the last caller, I saw her her Instagram. She she looks fine, you know. She should she should definitely have a dude. Um, so what, so what would you um? I know you said black women, there's like, there's like a really high single motherhood rate, like 60%, I think. So, um, um the other question I have, well, what would be like the forecast? What do you, <laughs> well, it's, it's going to be close. Well, what would be like the last time I checked the number is closer to 40% of the dating age. But like I say, we're certainly in a bad situation here. That's for certain, but go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, no, sorry. I'm just my last question. Um, so what would you, what was the forecast looking like? I know, um, Oh, the I think on one program you said we're going to have a nation full of lesbos. Uh, so what are we looking at in terms of like just the demographics and economics? No, it's, it's the, the, the forecast is ugly with a major chance of belligerent. I mean, that, that's what the forecast is here. Look, the bottom line is we used to have a society that groomed the daughters to be the most valuable and the best option of the men. That's what we used to have. We no longer have that. We don't have a society where the older women groom the younger women to win. We don't have older women who win anymore. We just have a bunch of old chicks who were dumb young chicks. And now all they're good for is sab they sabotage themselves. And now they're only good for sabotaging their own daughters. And that's all they're doing now. So the forecast is grim in that regard. And because the problem is global now, because the problem is global, that can be an issue. So what do you do? First and foremost, the rules really don't change. Honestly, you have to be a man who is doing the best for yourself. If you want to have the pick of the litter, you must be the pick of the litter. If you want to have your choice of the finest cuts, you, you've got to be in the position to be able to purchase that. So you have to be the male counterpart of the type of female you're looking for. It certainly is a more challenging environment. Can't argue with that. However, I will tell you one thing. If there were the if the more competent males that we have out here, the more you're going to see that change. Because at the end of the day, Atisha is is indicative of the environment. Women want what women want, but they don't want to pay for it. That's never going to change. Never, never, ever. They are always going to want an easier life and they are always going to want somebody else to finance it. They are never going to want to sit up there and do the heavy lifting for themselves. And the more men 
who are capable of doing that, the more leverage you have as a group. That's where we're lacking is that the men got to move as a group. When you have men moving as a group in a certain direction and doing the same thing, that's what changes paradigms. When they look around and see the men moving like that, but when you've got a sloppy movement, some of the dudes are on code and a bunch of them are off code and some of them are just disorganized and raggedy and they're easily distracted and they'll take whatever in the world they can get. You know, that's where we get messed up at. So what you need are for the men to be moving in concert and moving in unison. If the men are progressive, economically progressive, competent, intelligent, ambitious, producing results, driven when you see the men as a group moving that way then guess what the females have no choice but to respond to that so you notice you didn't change the females you changed yourself that makes females more competitive when they see what you got and they see what you're doing and i'm not just talking about financial your finances are supposed to be a side effect of who you are so when they see that your life is together and that you are together well, a woman wants to be a part of something with a man who is together you get there first and that's how you get to change the dynamic but you are never going to get any type of positive response trying to deal with the world from a position of weakness you cannot be in a weak position you can't be a guy that they can take or they can leave. You got to be. This is why I tell the fellas here. You have to be the type of fella here that if that chick is not threatening you. If you try to be with somebody else, it's like that. They're letting you know what your value is. Women go crazy over men who are valuable. That's the reason that the red pill exists today, because they're like they want that raw, visceral reaction from the women. They want that raw primal reaction. They want that raw primal sexual reaction, that raw primal social reaction, that raw primal emotional reaction, that raw primal instinctive reaction. They, that, that's what they want because they know it doesn't get any better than that. That's the real damn thing. And you can get that, but that's going to be something involuntary. If you walk like a sad sack, if you talk like you're a field mouse, you're not you're not going to get a, a very good response from a woman. If I show you a sexy chick, you? You don't, yeah. that's not something that you have to feel. There's a reason why the people here, whenever I show these things, there's a reason why they respond the way that they do. It's not really something you have to think about. If a female looks right, your biology just responds. Well, guess what? As a man, if you are proper productive, you don't have to sell it. This stuff sells itself. Got it. Um, no, uh, still there. Um, so would you even recommend going back to a girl you have to do that with? Um, like, cause, uh, I mean, if you're in that position to do it, you know, she was kind of giving you those signals of, you know, come back cause I need your, whatever your, um, your, your, productivity would you even recommend going back to her or just keep her around i guess it would depend on what she did for you all this love in the first place i guess it would depend on that uh, well. because as a man what you don't want to have is a disciplinary problem you don't want someone who's a chronic disciplinary problem you don't want someone who's making your life more difficult and it might be time to go ahead and have her submit her side chick application let me, I will just tell you this right here, yeah. though. How old are you? Uh, 27, just turned 27, actually. Okay. Well, first of all, you got to get your, your productivity and your you, getting your productivity together is what gets your selectivity together. I will tell you one thing, though. The number of females competing to be, to be with you is the single most important thing you can do for the woman you're with. If she knows that she is your only option or if she knows that she she knows, now she thinks she knows she is your only option and she knows she is your best option, don't expect her to try very hard. It's up to you to make it clear to her that you have other options. That's how you ignite competition. If she knows that she is the best you can do or, God forbid, the only one you can do, then expect for there to just be trouble. And maybe the sexual marketplace is not responding to her the way she would like. And she's checking to see, hey, hey, boo. But. That's yeah, and this is not, I think that's what it is, Jason. But um, 
Yeah, no, thank you for taking my call. Um, well, thank you but, very much for checking in with us you. here tonight. Let me get caller from area code 305. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's up, What's up, Jason? It's Z. You just call me Z from Miami. Okay, you said uh, V from Miami? Z, Z, Z as the last letter of the alphabet. All right, Z from Miami. What's on your mind? I, I just wanted to prepare us. Um, you know, um, the young man that was speaking before me, um, and he was asking his question. I don't see this turning out good, Jason. I, I hear what you're saying. And I, by the way, I've been a listener for, let's just say I've been a, lis- a listener to you from the crispy days. I'll say that. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. So, and, uh, yeah, Lamont, yeah. Lamont so, just stay on the line there on Zoom. I'll be with you in a minute. Uh, go ahead, go ahead and finish. Them. I just want to prepare us to maybe see women really struggle. I, I, I think um, that they're going to be on antidepressants as, as they reach kind of their, the, the logical conclusion of their delusion. Um, and the one thing I'll push back on you just a little bit, Jason, is I think some of, I, I'm in Miami. Even with the rent prices being what they are, you're still getting much of the same. I'm in a relationship, thank God. I'm not in a dating scene right now, but you're still getting some of the same attitudes, right? And... I think some of these women are just going to starve to death. I think their anger at, at their situation in life is just going to put them in a position to like just struggle to death. I, I, I think we're dealing with a, gener- with a couple of generations of women that are so headstrong in their beliefs that even while they're struggling, they're, it's, like, it's like dying on the ship, <laughs> but still waving the banner while you're, while you're sinking. They're sinking, but they're still like yelling from the top of their lungs about how they're not selling for whatever or they're not going to deal with whatever while they're drowning. So, you know, that, that's, that's my only, from what I'm seeing, I don't, really see, I don't really see a change in behavior so much, even as they struggle. You know, and, and once again, I'm in Miami and I'm seeing them struggle and I post COVID. Right. And there, I don't see any change in any behavior or anything. So I don't I don't know. Well, let me ask you a couple of questions here. Um, how old are you? Mm-hmm. I'm 35. OK. And how old was your last girlfriend? My, my girlfriend right now is 31. OK. Is she exhibiting the same problems? Nope. Okay. Well, especially for you dudes in your 30s and whatnot, I would definitely recommend for you all. Thank God. The 30s are where a female either is set or she breaks bad. So there won't be any more mysteries. If she's in her 30s, what you see is what you get. She is set in her ways. She, by the time when she's 30 years right. old, that is what you get right there. <laughs> so for the fellas here, like I say, another thing, guys, you know, if the females are not right when they're in their age, where, wherever you are and stuff, especially if you're in Florida or something, because Miami is just mm-hmm. the, the most, uh, is the fakest city in the world. It really just is. No dissing on it. Everybody says that. Yeah, it is just a. <laughs> it, it is the most that. phony city in America. I've never seen so many people pretending to have a car that they don't own, pretending to live in a house mm-hmm. or an apartment they don't own. It's just is is fake culture. Is 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 the culture of Miami? Not to say that there isn't money there. What I'm saying is, for every person, yeah. it seems like for every person who got it, there's half of a person who doesn't. Oh, I see. For every two, for every two, that, for every two people who got it, there's one person faking. Jason, we see, you know, I work for two different cities, um, in 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 the South Florida area. We see so many rented Lamborghini trucks. You would think oh, they're yeah. affordable. Do you <laughs> see what I'm saying? We see, it's it's it's. And by the way, for those of you that don't know, um, the Urus is about a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar truck. And I see so many of them. You would think like, oh, that's probably like 50 grand. No, 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 no. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's built on the same chassis as the Q7 and the Bentley Bentayga. But yeah, no, and, it's, the, it's and, the a, and the Volkswagen truck. Um, yeah, and really, um, the big Volkswagen truck. Really, with the yeah. prices going up, you're really going to pay about 300000 for an Urus now. Yes. Yep, so yep, it's, it's not cheap yep. at all and whatnot. And certainly, I mean, when you go to downtown Miami on a Friday night, you know, you're going to see at least... 10, 12 Uruses before midnight. You're going to see at least 10 or 12. And eight of those are rented at least. (laughs) Oh, oh, absolutely. Um, I I would say, I would say nine of the 10 are rented. 
I'd actually say nine out of yeah, ten are rented you're right. because yeah, you're going to see right. you're, you're going right. to see them in hotels. You're going to see them down the beachfront. Mm-hmm. People who own a car like that ain't going to go to a hotel, and they're not going to go to the beachfront in it. So there's your proof yeah. right there for anybody wondering. So yeah. that's what it is, and, and I don't mind my, people having a good time. Don't get me wrong, but the problem mm-hmm. is they don't stop at the club. They this is the lifestyle yeah. to go around faking it. And I wish yeah. they could say what they think is they're going to fake it till they make it, but in reality they just end up faking yeah. it until they don't make it. That's what really happens. And so that's my final thought um and I'll jump off is I want to prepare those of us um um millennials and Gen Z men that are stable or better than stable, get ready. You're going to see our age group about 42ish and down. The women in the next couple of years, in the next decade or so, antidepressants popping them that skittles. That's my forecast. I'm not wanting this, but just like you, Jason, I, I watch a bunch of stuff. I read a bunch of stuff, and it ain't looking good nowhere. No, right, right? now, and, uh, therapy is yeah. at an all-time high. And right now, yeah. antidepressants, I mean, the most prescribed medication is Zoloft. So, I mean, before the vac- mm-hmm. before the vaccine mm-hmm. started. But we're already there, brother. We're not on our way. We're already there. So yeah. right now you're mm-hmm. seeing a spike in therapy. Here's the problem. They're not, the therapy's not helping them. What they do is they go find a therapist who reinforces whatever bull crap they're already doing. That's right. the problem. Mm-hmm. If they find a therapist who actually confronts them about what they're doing or tries to change it, they just drop them and go find somebody who will help pat their hand and tell them you go girl. So they're, they go looking for an Oprah to reinforce it, which is why I tell them if you do get a therapist, it needs to be a black male. The only female, the only female I would trust the therapist is if it's a black male and then I need to check him out. But if she's going to go see another black female, forget it. She's not going to get any help. That woman's going to sit there and just tell her everything is okay. You see them on the online all the time. You see the black so-called female therapists on the line all the time, online all the time, and all they do is reinforce the nonsense. You're black female social workers. Oh, can, that's why so many children get killed. They don't check each other. They just reinforce each other. You're, you're about a decade older than me, so is that what you're seeing? Like, they hit that, um, I want to say wall, but in, in a different way. Like, they hit that mental wall where you can't even lie to yourself anymore. You can't, like, all the, the little mechanisms that you used to do or be, to kind of keep on waking up in the morning lying to yourself when that all falls apart. Like, is that what you're seeing at your age with the women of of your age group? Like when they, when they hit that, I, I'm no longer, I wasn't, I wasn't the young chick in the club for over a decade, but I'm not even getting like that three o'clock in the morning call anymore. Like that is that when it's like really therapy and antidepressants and all that other stuff. Generally is by the time they hit their late thirties, we're starting to see a lot more therapy happening. And you're starting to see basically surrender. What's happening now is they hit their late 30s and they're surrendering. Think of it like a man who finally gives up on that dream of going to the NFL or being a rapper. You know when he's finally given up on that because it's like, wow, he, he used to try to dress kind of okay now he's just dressing sloppy and it's like he doesn't care yeah. anymore about himself Dad, on a basic level <laughs> so like i say you know she stops taking care of herself if she realizes that when she finally accepts i shouldn't say realizes but accepts that the game is over and that she's unwilling to change and unwilling to in, invest herself in that then yeah it's 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 over and so you were noticing that now in their 30s I don't think it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's probably going to creep a little bit closer to the early 30s, but definitely what we're seeing now is well before they hit menopause now. It used to be they had to hit menopause before it happened. Now it's well before they hit it that basically, psychologically and emotionally, they just throw up their hands and admit that the game is over. Now, they don't literally throw up their hands. They still approach the world with their game face on, but it really yeah. is really hostile. So it's like before they were trying to win, Now they're approaching the world with their game face on, but they're not actually making moves to try to win anymore because they have accepted, I can't win. The game really is over. I squandered all of my time. Mm -hmm. Prince Charming is looking for something younger and less troublesome. So, and now because she's refused to change, she's angry at men. So every man she meets, whether she has children or not, she's like an angry baby mama, even if she doesn't have children. She's now she just sees you as somebody to get. I got to get him before he gets me. 
and that's what it becomes. And, and, and I'll, even and if they have, even if they have I'll, casual sex, statement. well, slow down. Even if they have casual sex with you, okay, okay. they're angry about that mm-hmm. too. Even if they have casual yeah. sex with you, they're angry about that too because wow. they that, that's not a benefit <laughs> to her. That's no benefit yeah. to her. Mm-hmm. Having casual sex is no benefit to her. It's a benefit to you. Mm-hmm. But having casual mm-hmm. sex with you is like, oh, I got to get my itches scratched. She's mo- she's more disgusted now than she was before she got there because she knows you're getting all the benefits. and nothing. She knows that's the way men prefer it with a female that they don't want to invest in. She has to just accept the only thing I can get is sex. I will. He, this guy is here only for sex. He's not going to invest in me. They spend their whole lives saying, you ain't going to just lay up with me. Then they wake up one day and, okay, they're okay with that happening. She's admitting it's defeated. The psyche mm-hmm. is broken and cracked. That's it. The ship is now mm-hmm. just going down. You know, and I'll end with this, Jason. The reason why I ask you that is I do have a couple of homegirls that I've been knowing since high school. And I see it. And, I, you know, you try to give them the the the. Your, your wisdom as a man and how you think and how you, you're pretty sure other men think and feel about dating, women, everything, weight, education. And you, one of them is in particular, the pushback. And I, and I don't want to say it. Like, do you understand, you know, what the dearly departed Kevin was saying or what Jason is saying? Like, do you understand what they're saying? They're not saying these things to make you depressed and sad. They're telling you, what, like you said, you're doing the math with the potential outcome can be if you continue down this road. And so that's why I called in today to, because I, I foresee it also. And it's, once again, it's not something I say out of glee. It's actually kind of, kind of sad. Well, I mean, look, the math, you live amongst, you know? the math is that yeah. the sobering math is that most females today have given up on themselves. We just have mm. to face that reality. The sobering math out here is that most of these females today They're walking around with these drug-induced smiles on their faces to the extent they are. But we know you call one call to customer service and they're surly as hell. So they're they they've given up on themselves for the most part. That's why it's more important than ever for men to become more competitive because in a situation where so many have given up on themselves, it's more important than ever to be able to provide incentives. It's more important than ever to control the landscape and provide incentives because let's be very, very clear. Everybody changes with hunger pain set in. I don't give a damn how hard headed they want to be. The point I, I was hope. making on the I point hope. I was making on tonight's program here is that because of the way the mm-hmm. economic environment is changing so radically right now, I mean you're watching this change from week to week. With a situation like this right now, you're gonna have a whole bunch of females getting smacked right. Let me tell you right now, all over the state of Florida, I was watching a news story. I was watching a news story that was saying that um, the median, uh, the median rent in Florida has gone up by 25% in the last two years. 25%. Yeah. In South Florida, it's past New York, if I'm not mistaken. I think, I think it was Miami in particular, um, the city of Miami. Not the whole D- Miami Dade County, but the city of Miami, I think, is second place to maybe, maybe one of the cities in California well, or New York. The, the whole state of Florida, now, I think. Uh, of the top 10 places in America where the rent is beyond its market value, Florida has eight of those mm-hmm. slots. I put up an article about that a few weeks ago. Florida is like yeah. seven or eight of those of those top 10 cities. Florida is seven or eight of them. <laughs> So what I'm saying is that, you know, that's the situation watching. And while Florida is an extreme example compared to the others, it's far from this wild outlier. It's far from that. So what I'm saying is up until now, we the strong and independent bullheaded era came with fewer consequences. You've entered the era of consequences now where the mat, the, the ride is over. It doesn't work anymore. You're a 40-year-old nurse practitioner, a 35-year-old accountant, a 30-year-old representative of the firm, and you've got $40,000 in your 401k. You got $20,000 in your 401k. You've got $3,000 in your savings account. You don't own a home. It's even. Your car is five or seven years old. 
If it's new, you're just in debt up to your ears. There is no exit strategy. And you have made mortal enemies of every man you've ever met. Now you're going to try to go back through your mental and emotional Rolodex and see if you can get somebody to answer the damn phone. Although now that brother, they understand they've torn their asses so bad. And ain't nobody going to answer the phone. And that's a hell of a thing to be in. Cause brother, they got no mercy out here. Now I'm just telling y'all right now, these landlords out here, they know, they know they got all the momentum behind them. They got no mercy. The home, those are just the landlords. The home builders are even worse. The home builders and the banks are even worse. Median housing prices right now is right around $400,000. Yep. You yeah. cannot do this by yourself. I mean, you can try, but the only thing you're going to do is die broke and you will work till you die. Thank you very much for checking in with us here tonight. Uh, on Zoom, Lamont, go ahead and turn your camera on, sir. We'll need for you to do that. Okay, turn your mic on. What's good, brother? There you go. All right, and what's on your mind, Lamont? Hey, man, just uh, just some commentary, man. Uh, the good news is, is that men are free. I mean, after this <laughs> week's uh, scenarios, uh, everything that we've been talking about, the single mothers, the women with the past, they basically now said, you know, they, they told this actor, you know, you should have known better. You should have known about her past because, you know, you, you went ahead and tried to spit shine her up and make her a wife. So that's now a new message to all the brothers that it's your fault if you know that she got that body count. Or you know, if she has those kids tagging behind her, right? Because they already told you that you're, you're dumb for doing that. So they're, they basically made an argument for us, right? But unfortunately, in trying to be right, they've just eliminated like 95 percent of themselves. So the good news is that's just freed men and just help you make your case for you. So, well, you know, there, there's a number of different dynamics at work there. One in particular is it has never been a better environment to be a single man with your money right than right. it is right now. I'm just telling you right now. And you look a little bit younger than I am. So you're in your 30s. Man, I'm 42, brother. Okay, well, okay. Well, like, like I said, that's the other thing right there, brother. We so stress-free. They they think we're in our 30s when they look at us. And it's like, no, we got them shackles up off our back. So what well, that tells Man. me, you never been married? No. Okay, no no kids? No kids, Dude, brother. I got okay. You, brother. That's, that's, the form, that's the formula, man. That's the equation. That's the equation. Oh, now he wants to show out, y'all. Now he wants to show out. What do you say? This, this is what he gets for no wife and no kids. This is the trade-off. <laughs> My, is he in my house? Me. Okay, no, he's. I was about to say, is he in my house? Let me. We got the, you know, got the nice Italian bicycle out here. Atisia, Atisia, send me an email. Oh boy, looks like he needs a side chick. What are we talking about, man? Yeah, she, I know a twenty-nine year old in Maryland. Um, she 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 might need some act right, so she needs she needs to come under some management. Atisia, send me your email. Lamont needs a side. Lamont's taking side chick applications. Life is good, man. So, you know, just just be about your thing, man. Keep your money up. Just, you know, just kind of stay in the gym a little bit. But the world is your oyster, man. But like I said, man, they, they done made art. It's never been better. It's never been easier. We've never had more options. And they're mad as hell. And we ain't, I don't like to hear hating and stuff. It's just like, look, you made your bed at this point. For those of us who played our cards right, didn't allow you to make us in the baby daddies, mess our money up, mess the credit up. Everything is good. You're in your 40s and you are in the best position you have ever been in your life. It's never been easier. You've never been less stressed. Everything's right where you want it to be. You ain't got no you ain't got no complaints. You don't have any. Life is good, man. Life is, you know, I'm, I'm a retired military, bro. So, you know, it's, it's <laughs> you know, we've been there, man. So uh, we made the right moves, man. Yeah, so, I mean, that, that's it, dude. I, 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 my hat's off to you. And I want the other fellas to recognize that that's the move. And if you ever decide you want to do something else, you can do it from a position of strength. If you ever do decide you want to help some chick hit the lottery, you're doing it from a position of strength now. Because the other thing is you're old enough now that it would pretty much be impossible for a chick to pull a fast one on you. You've seen every trick. You've seen every double cross. 
You've seen every faker. Like, like once you get in your 40s, you should be able to hear a chick talk about two minutes and be able to tell her whole life story. You should be able to tell everything. Yeah, we li- they'd love to come out here, man. You know, it's peaceful out here. You know? Y'all, but, he, you he, know, he doing he doing the most, y'all. He's doing the know, most. It's, it's peaceful out here, man, you know? Dude, you're going gonna, go you, to have these chicks like, Jason, what's his number? <laughs> Yeah, life is good, man. Like, like real talk, man. Life is, I mean, it's, you know, people made decisions as if they were still living in the 90s, man. People just made bad bets, man. Very the true. Wrong time. Very and true. The world moved about itself really damn quick. And there was like a 10 year span that really just changed how the earth spins and people were not prepared. And It's over, man. I mean, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't see if there's a way to go back. You know, you know, the, there was this old notion before, right? That, you know, and it, it, I think it came from all romance movies and things. They kind of pegged women as more like idealist, uh, idealist in love, right? And I used to, uh, people used to call me crazy, but I made the argument that the the romance movies actually weren't geared towards women; they were geared towards men. Because women understood that they didn't actually act like that. Condition men, you know, you do this kind of this, this. But people, there ain't no going back, man. It's over. I mean, that's it's, it's what it is, man. Well, and that's and a good thing too. As a matter unfortunately, of fact, people haven't. I wouldn't want us to go back. To be totally honest, I'm I want us to keep going in the direction that we're in because that old suck a mess we were doing in the 90s and whatnot dude look where that got us in the late 80s and the 90s that we didn't get anything from that all that sucking up and ass kissing and whatnot and mother queen things we we oh, gave we gave down. away the damn farm and threw away the standards and and that didn't work it could never work all you created was a generation of spoiled brats and they've got contempt now. I mean, they're not just a little disrespectful. They just got contempt walking in the door. So you're not going to get respect until you demand it. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, brother, man, we don't need to go back. We're, 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 we need to keep heading right in the direction we're in right now. And you know what? If the fellas just hold out and say, you know what? Yeah, I ain't worried about getting married or having any kids till I'm in my 40s or 50s. And you got that 20 year gap. Just let's be very, very clear. We can survive that 20 year gap just fine. We're good. The females, on the other hand, well, that 20 year gap is a monster. That 20 year gap is a monster. I'll let you have the last word. Always kind of listening to the clouds, man. I've been on your show for a hot second before, man. But, you know, I I thought I'd drop on it. Add my little two cents, man. Well, you definitely did, brother. Keep balling. Thank you very much for checking in with us here tonight. We appreciate it. Yeah, y'all, like I say, just get your stuff together, man. It's, it's, it's worth it. The best, the biggest and best investment you can make is in yourselves. Ladies, choose wisely. Choose wisely. My biggest piece of advice to you is choose wisely. Men are workhorses. This is what we do. You're not going to want to be doing that. You're not going to want to be stomping like that. You're not going to want that. Let me get caller from area code 412. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good evening, Jason. My name is Robert. I'm calling from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And um, the reason I'm calling is to let you know how much I enjoy the program. And I'm a little bit perplexed. Um, we have a multifaceted problem, whereas collectively, whether we like it or not, we're in damage control. I'm glad that young brothers like the one you just were talking to or are, are focused on being the best they can be to optimize their attraction to the opposite sex. And it's good, you know, that's getting ourselves together. But my question to you is, what can we do collectively as as men and women to cross that chasm of dysfunction that we have as we emulated the dominant society trying to 
um, tell us how to act toward each other. And I think the most person who was in, the people that were, the, the gender that was impacted most was females. But ultimately, it impacted us because the way they act, it impacted how we treat them and how we even treat ourselves. So what would be the number one thing that we can do to, to bring us back together so that we can preserve the black family? Well, there is only one thing you can do. You can't change the rest of the world. You can only change yourself. And the rest of the world will be required to alter the way it treats you and responds to you. So you can't sit up here and say, okay, let me change the rest of the world. You have to change yourself, making yourself as valuable as possible, making yourself as capable as possible, making yourself as versatile as possible. Those are the things that give you the ability to change your life. And in response, the world around you must change. So don't worry about changing the women. Worry about focusing on yourself to an incredible degree and everything around you must change. The environment has to alter. So you'll be thinking you changed them. And I guess in some ways you did, but only because you changed yourself. That's the only thing you actually do have any control over. You only have absolute control over yourself. Change you. And that's what forces the rest of the world to alter the way in which it behaves with you. The essential, that, those, that was well, I understand that completely. The essential end of everything is change. And as we change and maintain and be strong in our change toward the betterment, I feel that it will ultimately, like you said, um, be extrapolated to the change in, in the females. What do you, uh, last, last question if I may, um, what do you think about the paradigm awareness that um, this is a so-called feminine energy planet, whereas men, whereas women, uh, where this is more of a, a matriarchal society, um, where both sexes have their part. And at one point, was it true that women made the rules, but we enforce them because that's what we like to do. <laughs> and, um, and, and both, well, I think, I think teamwork makes a dream work, and so we need to work together. But um, I really appreciate Look, your there's strength. a basic I mean, reality. Most males are betas. Now, some are severe betas and incels, and others are, you know, softer and less... They're softer and more submissive than they should be. But the bottom line is alphas are not the majority. I'm not going to... Nowadays, alphas are rare, but the truth of the matter is most males are betas. Most okay. males are betas mm -hmm. and they get beta results from life, from women, from everything. How you do one thing is how you do all things. It's not like the fellas are not doing well with the women, but killing the game and everything else. Remember, the average male income among black males is, you know, forty one, forty two thousand dollars. So it's not like, you yeah. know, they're ultra competitive as a group. So. What I'm saying is that that's the dynamic that needs to change. That's the one right there. The one where you say, how I do one thing is how I do all things. I need to excel. But that's a hard sell because that takes damn work. Everybody wants to look like they put in tons of work, but they don't want to become someone who does tons of work. So mm -hmm. that's the dynamic that needs to change right there. And then as a result, all these other things alter with it. All these other things alter with it. Women are adaptive creatures, so... They're very in the modern era, they become very good for slogans because Wall Street and Madison Avenue found them to be a very easy consumer base to exploit. So they know just give them some slogans and, and they'll cheer for it and spin themselves into oblivion. That's how vicious these corporations are that they'll play upon your worst instincts. And they're like, hell, mm. females live on vanity. Let's just bloat their egos and they'll pay us however much money we want while they wreck themselves. And in a lot of these cases, you're dealing with individuals who don't even like women. They don't date. These are men who don't mm -hmm. date women. So they don't really have any regard for them. I appreciate your insight and your direction. And thank you very much, Jason. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Um, let me see. Kamir, go ahead and unmute yourself. All oh, right, brother. And what's on your I'm mind? Doing, I'm doing well, man. I... Uh, First of all, thanks for having me, man. I've uh, been listening to you for a while now. Um, I just uh, wanted to ask, like, what advice would you give, like, a 24-year-old? 
like myself, like I'm a, I'm in a unique position. Um, I'm up here in the DC area. I do cybersecurity. I make over six figures. Like, what, what type of advice would you give to a young man like myself um, navigating in this, like in this world that we're living in, like in the data market and everything, like even financially, like if you was like, if you wasn't, if you were to take yourself back and was in this position, like what, how would you move uh, um, well, given like the circumstances we're in now? Right about the time I was your age, everybody knows where this story goes. I had a female with a size <laughs> six waist and a size 12 ass, but when I was your age and I spent more time with her than I did on my business. And guess which, what, what I lost? I lost both of them. First mm. the business, then I lost her. Although I think I lost her somewhere in between. So it's, it's all a blur after all these decades. So the first thing I will tell you, young man, is invest in yourself. Invest in yourself okay. on all levels. You look like the kind of guy who understands, you know, you have to invest in yourself, invest in your confidence, because that's something you do with everything. If you're confident, don't just be confident at your job. Be confident at your job, your family members, women, men, children. That's not just something you do in one place. It's supposed to be a way of life. So first and foremost, invest in you. Now, you've already gotten into IT. That's great. Um, how much are you making right now? Um, 135000 Okay. I would continue taking that to the upper limit because you have to secure your future. And if you're 24 years old and you've made it this far, man, you are hitting on all cylinders and that's great, but you still have some headroom to go. Whether you want to become a contractor or whatever, that's going to be up to you, but you need to be ultra competitive. I think in your case, you have the ability to double your income one more time because you're already over 130,000. It's not going to be a huge amount more you can get unless you become a contractor or something, but you do I do believe you have the ability to double your income one more time and at least get it over 200,000. At but that point, not, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, at that point, I think you've got mostly your financial issue taken care of. After that, no, I shouldn't say after that. In conjunction with that, don't make stupid unforced errors. Don't have, yeah. ch don't get no bastard kids. If she's not worth marrying, you ain't supposed to be getting her pregnant. As a matter of fact, I would tell you don't get married or have any children. Time is on your side. Don't let the fact that she is in a rush put you in a rush. You are in no hurry. You still got another decade ahead of you to max out your abilities. It is your job to become most valuable for you. It's not your job to sit up here and leave the field because it's of convenience to somebody else. You got a decade of runway still in front of you, brother. You don't, you ain't seen the half of what you're going to be able to do. So right now you need to be stacking your chips all over the damn place. You're, you're, you're making yourself a hot free agent prospect and that's where you want to be so when you finally do decide to make that move you will be making it from a position of strength now right now your money's good but for example how much do you have saved up in the bank uh, Fourteen thousand. okay so 10 percent of his gross income so you see what the problem is there Right. You don't have you, you don't have you don't even have six months income in the bank. I recommend that you have one year of income in savings. Do you have a 401k or an IRA? Uh, at my current job, I don't have a 401k. Um, I'm looking at picking up a second job because I work remote so I can work two jobs at once. It is uh, like essential. It is essential okay. unless you are dogged and determined. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur when I was 13 years old. Most people are not like that. If that's not, if you have not settled, that you are dogged and determined and hell bent that that's where you're going to go, you need to have a retirement account, young man. You cannot wait until you're in your 40s to start doing this. You are in your 20s. If you get a 401k now, max that damn thing out. Um, of course, you can have more than one. But if you need, to, remember with the rules, go watch a PBS. And you know, I told y'all about this before, the retirement gamble. You need to go ahead and see that. Um, and um, the other one I was talking about here the other day, uh, you all saw me post yeah. it on the community page. You need to go and check those out so that you can see that because you need to understand what you're looking at. And you need to invest in that now. You need to put that money away now. You're not going to be able to do that years and years from now. You have to start early. You have to be consistent. 
you have to put in the maximum amount and you have to do it for the entire 40 years. Those are the rules. You have to do it for the whole stretch. You can't sit up here and just do part of it. You got to do it for the whole damn stretch. So right now you're 24, brother. You will be putting in now. I know it seems like a drag, but you have got to take care of yourself now. This is the time to do it. If you if you are negligent here, you're going to be suffering from this for the rest of your life. You cannot be negligent about this here. You can't be. Um, I have a question. Like, so the money I, I told you about, like right now, I'm in the process of uh, buying a home, like buying a house. No. You, you don't think that's a good idea? No, that's that's a that would be a huge. That would be a gigantic long-term commitment how much were you planning on paying for it um i have a i got approved for 335 but i i didn't want to use the whole um i didn't want to purchase it for that entire amount okay. and i plan on not just living there just to have it to um rent out or airbnb or something like that okay um i was trying to think of it there pbs frontline can you afford to retire that's the name of the documentary pbs frontline can you afford to retire? It is required viewing for you all. Those four rules are would you have to have. You have to start early to put into your retirement. 401k will not work if you don't start early, you don't make a good income, you don't put in the maximum amount, and you do it consistently for the entire four decades. So you have to do those four things in conjunction. You're 24, it's not too late for you yet. You wait till you're in your 30s, you're going to have to double time it start on it now. I know it seems like a drag. Everybody would love to just keep their money and spend it on everything they want to do. You got to look out for your future because you're a black male. I think you would be well served to check out your family and see, I hope nothing happens, but you know, Kevin Samuels got buried. Didn't see that coming. Do you have health conditions in the family or chronic health conditions in the family? You want to check that out and find out, are there any, phantoms out there lurking that you haven't really thought of. Well, I'm 24 and I feel great. Everybody feels great until they don't. So that's the way it always goes. So you have to be aware of that and you're not going to want to pull that weight if, if it does come down to that. So I'm going to recommend that you check into those kind of things and get the reason for getting ready for your retirement is just in case life does something you didn't predict. You're not going to want to be 40 years old trying to double time it. So put those things in place now. And that's why getting your money up is great. You're never going to be as healthy as you are right now. Right now you can work 18 hours and it's a whole lot easier for you than it is when you get 40 right now, you can run full speed and this is the time to be doing it right here, right now. You'll never be as healthy as you are. Never be able to be a workhorse as well as you are. And you do that. You put another 15 straight years into this and then you can start taking it a little bit easy by the time you get 40. But right now be about your business If you want to have a chick on the side, that's cool, but that doesn't need to be your life or your focus. If you want to purchase property, my thing is I would find that to be very difficult to do to just get one property, which is where you're at right now. You only have enough to just, and you would definitely be behind the eight ball. Interest rates are going up. You don't have much of a down payment. You'd have to pay PMI, which means you're going to be paying the max for everything. So... I cannot in good conscience endorse that. I I can't do that. I just can't. That would be a long-term investment. And in good conscience, you could do it. But, I mean, you're not the kind of guy who's going to be flipping houses and stuff. You would be far better served investing in yourself. You would be far better served increasing your skill set so that you can get your income, getting another few certs and some more experience to get your income up another $40,000. That would do you more good than renting a house. Think about that for a few moments. Absolutely. It's funny you say that. Uh, Next week, I start training for my CISSP uh, certification. But um, anybody that knows anything about cybersecurity know that's like one of the most coveted certification to have and uh, my job fortunately is on being a sponsor for me so that's going to be the next certification i get and um, that's going to definitely increase my income and also the fact i work from home um, i'm able to kind of like have two jobs at once on doing remote work which is like what i was kind of doing last summer so um i do plan on uh, definitely making the strat the steps to increase my income and uh, invest in myself like you just mentioned 
You're only I'm 20. You're only 24 years old. We expect that the housing market is probably going to tank here in a couple of years. It's already overheated. And now is not the time, in my opinion, now is not the time to be buying property, especially for you in your position. Check back in a couple of years. When the housing market does a correction, you would be better off trying to make a move then. But right now, even if you did, how much could you possibly get in a year from it? It would be better for you to invest in yourself and get that from you as opposed to having a getting tied up with a house instead. So that's my if I were in your shoes, that's what I'd be doing. I would not take any long term investments, no kids, no babies, no wives, um, because it's not really going to put you ahead. You would need more to do make something like that work for you positively. You would need more than just one home. You need more than just one structure to do that with. It's going to be very, very hard to do that because, like, what city would you be doing it in? I was looking in Baltimore. Okay. Yeah, that's that's going to be – you would be better off investing in yourself. I won't belabor the issue, but you'd be better off investing in yourself over the next few years and check out what happens then because here's the problem. If you can't convince me that you can save – Thirty or forty thousand dollars a year. I find it very difficult to believe that you're going to be able to buy and rehab houses to either flip them or rent them or whatever. I would find it difficult to believe you have the discipline to do that. So show me you can handle the money you got, and then we can take a look at other things. Because I don't yeah, want you in a situation where you put five percent down and then you're paying the highest interest rate. You're paying PMI. You got the structure, but I'm like, you know, make it smart money. And like right now, with the interest rate steadily going up, this. This isn't the time to be buying right now anyway. This is not the time to be doing it. Absolutely. Okay. But invest in yourself, young man. You are doing all the right moves. Just right now, don't let anybody get you into any unforced errors. No kids, no wives. Stay on your grind. Stay focused. And, man, you're putting yourself in a very good position. You're putting yourself in an excellent position. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Like I listen to you all the time. Like You... (laughs) You gonna make things like clear to me and like sharpen my focus and understand like how to move as a like how men should think and move and what our focus should be. Like it's a constant reminder when I'm listening to you. So I appreciate you and your platform. Honestly. Well, I'm glad to see you here. These are young men. Like I said, I want to see the young fellas get the benefits that I wished I'd have known about at the time. I wish I had somebody to sit there and say, Hey, get your hands off that girl's ass and over here back on your business where you're supposed to be. And I know it's a grind. You know, it's like you're looking at other folks your age and like it looks like they they actually have a life. And you know, some <laughs> it's monotonous. I understand that you're sitting in front of your computer stuff. It's monotonous, dude. Listen to me. Listen to Lamont who called in, brother. We are in the best position we ever been in our life. Let me tell you something right now. I noticed something about Lamont that I noticed about myself. You didn't see a bunch of gray hairs in his beard either. Right, what, what, right, I will right. t- what I will tell you is I'm almost 50 and I haven't gone gray yet. My, my beard is jet black. I haven't gone gray yet. You know what I attribute that to? Retiring in my damn 30s, Kamir. That's what I attribute that to a whole bunch of because I got relatives who can't say the same thing. I can tell you, I think there's a direct link between getting that garbage off my back and being able to deal with life from a position of strength. And there's I got problems and worries, but I ain't got them kind of problems and worries. So I will tell you right now, my beard is still black. And so was his. And we both saying, by the way, oh, we got them problems off us before we got in our 40s. I think I see a connection. Come here. I would like to see you one day in the black beard club. That's what I would like to see you. Yeah, I'm there. man. I'm definitely going to be there. Well, thank you very much for joining us here. Please check back with me here in six months. I'd like to hear what's an update from you. Absolutely. I'll give you an update. Thank you very much for checking in with us here tonight. Like I say, nobody thinks about it until it's time to think about it. Nobody thinks about it until it's time to think about it. I never thought about it in that way either, but never thought about it in that way either. There are benefits to that. Let me go ahead and see uh, Triple X. I see you there on Zoom. Go ahead and turn your camera on, please. Okay, that Atari desktop computer he's using is moving real slow. Okay, 
Turn on your camera there, Lex. Nobody can see you and nobody can hear you, so I'm going to give you a couple of moments here to turn it on. If you don't, I'm going to have to remove you. Okay, he's got the most going on. Turn, get, Go back over there where the light is, sir. You, you, you are silhouetted out. There you go. All right. Looking better All right. there. All, All right. right, Triple X. And the Lex Express is on the line here. And what's on your mind, brother? Hey, hey, Mr. Black, what's going on? Phenomenal uh, broadcast, as always. Uh, really appreciate you coming on here, putting down the numbers and laying down the facts. And uh, you've been on the forefront of this gentrification uh, train for a long while. I mean, you called a lot of this stuff out years ago. So it's really it's, it's intriguing to watch it, everything come to fruition as it is right now. So. Uh, this is a very trying time. Eventually, it would be a very trying time for a lot of single women and single moms. I know a lot of them are struggling right now. So, uh, yeah, man, for us brothers that uh, put the grind in early, hey, this is, uh, this is a good time. Life is good right now. This, for the fellows whose money is straight right now, it's never been better. There has never been a oh, better yeah. time. This ain't that fake ass, you know, black girls rock or something like that. And meanwhile, you're sitting on the consumer debt for the fellows who got their money together. You've never had more upward mobility. You've never had more flexibility. You've never had more options. You've never had more anything than we got right now. And, right. and you know, the, if you yeah. are compet if you are competent and competitive, you've literally never had more options than you have right now. You never had more ability than you have. And I ain't even talking about with the passport game. There's a bunch of guys who are just betas and lanes with passports. Yeah. But for the fellows who got their act together, if you're making it hit in America, you can make it hit anywhere. And if your money is straight, you know, you're on easy street. You really, really are. You, you, you got things on easy mode right now. Yeah. And that's a good place yeah. to be in. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I got my engineering degree like 15 years ago and uh, no kids, man. And uh, life is just fantastic right now. Living my dreams. Yeah, it's, it's good not to have anybody be able to call hands on you and tell you what you're going to do and, you know, and, and sit up here and disrupt your plan. But that's the that's the product of having a plan. Now you got the ability to reward your friends and, and neglect your enemies if you need to and be able to elevate yourself. And, and that's good to be able to do that. How old are you? Uh, I'm 40. Okay. At 40 years old. And like I say, if you got it easy right now and you got stuff where you want it to be, that's what you want to be, man. You don't want to be 55 or 60 years old and still trying to figure it out. I saw a video the other day that just irked the hell out of me. It was a dude on YouTube and he's talking about, um, don't worry if you don't know what you want, if you're 37 and don't know what you want to do. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? This is the time to panic if you don't know what you're doing at 37. If you haven't figured it out by 37, <laughs> you're, right you're, you're supposed to be panicking like hell. He's talking about it's all right if you don't know what you if you don't know what you want to do with your life by 37. What are you talking about? It's halfway over. Talking about you don't have to worry. This you're almost halfway through your life and don't know what you want to do. <laughs> no savings, yeah. no yeah, assets, yeah, no yeah. direction, no no benefits, and you're almost you're actually depending on what you are. Because like for black males, you're over halfway through your life and still don't know what to do. That's suicide. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Growing up, I, you know, I came up with a lot of guys like that. A lot of guys went to the streets. Uh, life went left after that. And there, there's a lot of guys got killed. A lot of guys went to jail. A lot of guys just roaming now. They really don't know what to do with themselves. So, yeah, Jason, you right, man. No, no brother, doubt about that. I met a bunch of them, man. Like I say, I, I ran into an old high school classmate a few years ago. Ran into an old high yeah. school classmate. Bruh, I didn't know what to tell him. Like I said, he saw what I was rolling. He saw how things were going. You know, yeah. you know what's coming next. And he's like, oh, he going to hit me up. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm sitting here saying in my head, don't do it. But you know, I, I don't want to have to tell you this. Don't, <laughs> don't do it. And just, hey, just let's shake hands and keep, I, I, let's shake right. hands and part friendly and keep it pushing because if you go there, 
I, I'm about to make it look like it's just, oh, he done forgot where he came from. I ain't forgot the damn thing. I remember what you were doing <laughs> when we were 22. I saw what you, and let me tell you, dude, he was all about money, hoes, and clothes. He, I'm sorry, not in that order. Hoes, clothes, and money. And the money was real small. He was, the females yeah. loved him. He was one of these light-skinned dudes. And then he wasn't terribly light skinned, but he was yeah. a little bit on the lighter side. The females loved him. You know, he, he got along with them real well. He did a hell of a whole lot better with them than I was at the time. I just wanted one. He wanted a harem and he got it. He specialized yeah. in that. I was trying to build an enterprise. He specialized in that. But his right. I, I saw real early. I'm like, you know, dude, you, you got a bunch of broads r- s- circling around you, but uh, your money ain't right. Your money isn't right. And I'm like, what the hell are you going to do in 10 years? And I just realized I couldn't even talk to him anymore. So I was just like, you know what? I'm going to let yeah. you do what you do. And I'm going to focus on doing what I do. And yeah, I went bankrupt, but then I recovered from it. Obviously, he didn't. I will not tell you where he was working at. I will say it is a place mm. that has a drive through window. Oh, damn. Woo! Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I, I've been to a few of those reunions, man. I don't even like to show them what I'm driving or what I'm doing, man, because uh, they don't like it. I'm scared. Know? I'm going to get carjacked. Yeah, I, I can't go there. Yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I, I like might it, get man. bopped over the head. Yeah. Yeah, man. I know what you mean. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Well, like hey, I said, man, just Mr. keep focused, keep always, straight. Uh, That's what always you need to do. Treat, man. Well, I'm glad to speak with you here, brother. Like I say, just, you know, stay fully focused. These young cats need to see what's happening here to see some fellas, you know, who can testify to them. Hey, it really does work. Don't sit up here and make unforced errors. You got young dudes out here. These chicks out here pimping the fellas now. They say they want a baby and then he's up here popping and doing it. Now, the good news is we're seeing fewer of them doing that. Now, that's the good news. There are actually fewer of these fellas out here making that particular right. unforced error. And we're actually seeing more fellas who, even if they're not getting their money together, they're at least not becoming somebody's sucker. And those two factors together are going to cause some tremendous changes and shifts out here. Ladies, the, free, the, the easy days are over. The easy days are all, all the low hanging fruit is gone. They all going to have to be doing like that dude in Tennessee is all the chicks are going to have to get a baby by the same dude. He's going to have 40, 50 kids. That's the only option they're going to have to to be a baby mama here in a minute. That's the only option you're going to have. Not one guy with three kids. You're going to go grab that one guy who got 30 kids and I'm not joking. Thank you very much for checking in with us here, brother. We appreciate hearing from you here. You know, just keep it rolling. That's what you got to do, man. So good, good look out there. Good look. All right. Glad to hear from you here. And like I say, it's just one of those things where I want the fellas to have that. I want them to see that and to see what they're doing. That's important here. Um, let me see here. What are you saying? Okay. Mm. Um, on Zoom, um, Byron, I want you to just come on Zoom. I need to get to you here in a minute. So just hang tight for a moment. I want to take this phone call here. Let me get caller from area code 516. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Jason. This is Christine from Brentwood, Maryland. Hello, Christine from Brentwood, Maryland. First Prince George's County now. Brentwood, what's on your mind? Yeah, um, I had a question. Is it okay if a 16 or 17-year-old, um, if you tell the 16, 17 year old young boy, um, it's okay that he doesn't know what he wants to do? Because I have family members who have sons around, I would say, 13 to about 16, 17, and they think it's okay to tell them... Uh, that they, it's okay that they don't know what they want to do with their life or have any direction. And it just doesn't sit sit right with me. And I think they should have a little bit more guidance, but I just wanted to ask. I can answer that question best by saying, asking two questions. Do you believe that those children, if they're 15 or 16 now, do you think in four years when they graduate from high school that they will be 
operating in the world by themselves. They'll be the only ones out there. No. Okay. That's question number one. So we know that they will not be the only ones out there. There's going to be a bunch of other people out there with them. Then that leads us to question number two. The other folk who are out there with them, they're white, Asian, Latino, Arab, Indian counterparts. Do you think their parents are telling them, well, it's okay if you don't know what you want to do when you're 15 or 16 years old? Absolutely not. They're not telling them that. They're then, getting them ready really early. Okay. So he, we know for a fact he's going to not be by himself and he's going to be competing in the world with these other people. And we know that their parents are telling them, you got to hit the ground running. So everybody who's telling their kids, you don't have to, you're going to get devoured by the folks who are telling their kids they have to. They're giving them, they're getting them ahead of the game on you. So they're going to have the drop. They're going to get the drop on them. And if, as far as direction, um, what do you, how would you approach a young man at that age and find out his interests and kind of give him some guidance if his parents aren't doing it? How do you, as an aunt, if I'm an aunt or a older sister, like how do I give them that guidance? Okay. Well, first of all, you don't really ask them what they want to do. I mean, you only ask them as a formality. There's only a few things they're going to pay their way in this world. They got to have a skill. There's only a few things they're going to do that. Now, it's one thing to get into media like I've done, but that's a talent that very few people have. So if they don't have a talent for something like that, being creative is always very good, but they're going to need a technical skill. They're going to have to be technically proficient at something that people need. So STEM is always an excellent area to begin in. And the sooner they can start on that, the better. But that's not really something that you need to ask them. You already know there's only going to be a few things that are actually going to secure them. So you can ask them what they want and then figure out which part of STEM would best accommodate that. Okay. But Asians don't and really ask their children what they want. They they know there's only a few things that will benefit them. And it's like, okay, you can tell me what you want, and then I'm going to tell you which one you're going to do. Right. And that's the approach that, like, my husband tried to get, you know, involved with them, but they seem disinterested. And they're very, like, interested in sports. Like, one is interested in basketball. The other one is interested in soccer. But I don't. I want to steer them kind of away from that and kind of something more constructive and more that they can use and like a skill that can be scalable and like IT. But we tried to push the IT thing and they didn't, they seem disinterested in that because me and my husband are both in IT and we know that we can teach them that. But it's just I I mean I just want to get them before they get too like much older and you know their parents also are not really you know pushing them in the way we we think they should be so. I just wanted to get your advice on that. Well, it can be difficult, especially if they're not your children. There's only so much authority right. that you have, but you can definitely try to be a positive influence, especially if the parents are being negligent. The problem we have today is that the people who have the children are least qualified to raise them, and the people most qualified to raise them don't have the children. And that's the problem with the world today. The people who would be the best parents don't have the kids, and the people who are the worst parents are the ones with boatloads of them. So try to be a positive peripheral influence on them. That's the most important thing, especially if you can take them on field trips. That's great. Hey, kids, come with us. Take okay. their ass in the car. That's always a good thing. Yeah, I'm running off with them for a while. The parents will probably give you two thumbs up on that. Like, That's a great idea, especially in the summer. <laughs> yeah, leave the kids with me for a little yeah. bit because you niggas ain't going to do nothing with them. So. Yeah, we're planning on taking one of them for the summer. So, um, yeah, that's actually a great idea. Yeah, that's a good thing right there. You let me take the kids with them because y'all ain't going to do a damn thing. So, I definitely endorse that. Thank you, Jason. Thank you very much for checking in with us here. Yeah, for y'all, if you kin folks are messing up with the kids, grab them, suckers. Grab them. All right, uh, Byron, we got you here on Zoom. What's on your mind, brother? Okay, Byron, if you're not hearing us, something is wrong. Okay, 
Byron is on Zoom, but he is apparently not able to hear us. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn his camera on here. And maybe he'll be able to hear us here in a moment and realize that, by the way, we're waiting on him. He's trying to connect his audio. That's a good place to start. That's actually an excellent place to start. Okay, Byron, I do not know what's going on. But we are not hearing you. Okay. Let me put Byron back in the waiting room here then. See if we can get him to uh, get himself together there a little bit. In the meantime, let me go ahead and grab caller from area code 610. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good evening, Brother Jason. This is Adam calling from Reading, Pennsylvania. Adam from Reading, Pennsylvania. What's on your mind? Uh, yeah, uh, B1. And uh, thank you. I just want to start off by saying thank you for all that you do, man. Um, I, I followed the business for a couple, a few years now, and since I've been following you and following everything to the T, it's been solid. Like it's been life changing, and so uh, I owe all that to you. So I'm going to continue to support, and I thank you for that very much, man. All right, thank you very much for checking in with us here tonight. We appreciate hearing from you here. I'm glad to hear things are going well. Let me get caller from area code eight one six. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, my name is Apex, calling out of Honolulu, Hawaii. All right, Apex out of Honolulu. Uh, Byron, it looks like you got your mic taken care of, so I'll get to you here in just a moment. So just stay where you are, Byron. All right, um, Apex, go ahead. I, I have a question. Now, I have a uh, six-year-old daughter in light of everything that you just laid out tonight. I have a six-year-old daughter, right? <clears throat> About two years ago, this is what I told her. Now, I need your opinion if I was right or wrong in saying this to her. When she was about four years old, maybe going on five, I told her what she's going to do when she graduates high school, she is going to go to college for the specific pur purpose of uh, getting a husband, a qualified husband that's in like STEM, law, or medicine. And my mother overheard me having this conversation with her, and she chastised me about it. So I just want to get your opinion. Was I in the wrong or what? I am not going to say that you were necessarily, quote unquote, in the wrong. What I am going to say is context is important. How old is your daughter? She's six going on seven. OK, well, you certainly need to be having the drug talk and the sex talk with her. You certainly need to be having that mm -hmm. that one. The marriage talk will certainly, we want to make sure she's aware of the concept. I'm just not so sure that a six-year-old really grasps the concept of marriage in college, like prioritizing it like that. You see what I mean? I'm just not certain that they, under, that they grasp that concept. You and I certainly do. And I think it's, I think it's, it's cool. It's all right that you mentioned it. Don't get me wrong. It's all right. You mentioned it. Um, I just I just wonder about her ability to actually comprehend it and put it in its proper context. That would be the only thing I would be right, my wondering about. Yeah, my mother was telling me she's like Benjamin, you're moving too fast with this. So okay, that that puts it in perspective. So yeah, I, would, I wouldn't having, necessarily say uh, too fast. I mean, I certainly she's probably thinking, okay, just we would just wonder about the context of it. And is she old? Is she too young to get it, or is she old enough to get it? Um, you mentioned it to her. I think it's okay that you mentioned it to her, okay? Because these are formative years. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay you mentioned it. I, I don't think there's a problem with you mentioning it. I don't think there's a problem with that at all. These are things you want to get in early. So I don't think that's a problem at all. I don't think it's something you need to harp on as make it a religion on a daily basis. But you you sprinkled it, so you right, started planting. You started planting some seeds, and that's fine. Because what you're making it clear is. You know, you're letting her know the time frame, and that's important to reference that. That's important to reference that. So you've mentioned it. You've done your due diligence. We we can come back and revisit this. So you meant she's six years old. Yeah, we mentioned it there. She knows what dad expects. This is very very important if you have a daughter. This is very important if you have a daughter because you are her masculine role model. You're her masculine prototype, uh -huh. 
and she's going to remember that this was dad's advice. So that's going to resonate with her like it, like nobody else. I don't have a problem. Right. Because, um, one thing now, yeah, I'm, I'm going to ease up on that. I'm going to take your advice on that. Um, one thing that I've noticed, because I'm a millennial, I'm uh, 37, going on 38, right? Uh, one thing I've noticed is that the fathers of the women of my generation failed them. They imbued them with this entitled princess uh, complex. And it's just every every time you come across them, it's like, well, my daddy did, my daddy did this, my daddy did that. And they just spoiled them rotten. So I want to make sure that I take responsibility on my part. So when I'm raising my, my gen alpha, that I'm not negligent in doing so. I don't want to put a bad, um, you know, bad child, bad seed out in the streets. But that's well, no, I mean, no, no, like I say, I can, I'm not going to castigate your mom about it necessarily. Um, you know, look, I think everybody wants what's in the girl's best interest, which is, very, very important. Um, as long as your mom is not trying to interfere, that's a different thing. Cause if mom is, if mom's objection is she need to go to college so she can get her a good degree and get her a good job. Now, if that's what mom is saying, now, you know how I'm going to respond. She's kind of like that. Okay. Well, yeah, she, she's kind of like that. And I've, I've heard, uh, other aunties of my, this one cousin of mine, she's in college right now. And this was like several years back. This is like before all of this, and my younger cousin was going to college and uh, she she told us she was going into mathematics. And my auntie was like, that's good because you want to be able to uh, count the money, you know, over the man. She, she said something to that effect, you know, yeah. to try to be able to is be your ahead aunt, of the man mathematically. Is your aunt married? She's remarried. She's okay. remarried. Is your mom married? Divorced and never remarried. How long has she been divorced? 1995, I believe I was 12 when they divorced. And Tupac wasn't dead yet. No. Okay. He was still thugging. Brother, I'll, I'll let that speak for itself. Yeah, I know. I, they, that's the family I come from. My grandma had nine daughters and they're pit yeah. bulls, you know? Yeah, I'm just so, saying. Her, her judgment and her wisdom... Take a look at where her wisdom about doing things with men got her. So uh, I'm not going to tell you to, you know, give your mom the super kick in the back of the neck. I'm not going to tell you to do that. But I am going to say it's like, all right, mom, I, all right, mm, let me get my no, head. I, so. I, I tell my mom all the time, I say, I tell my mom all the time, I say, this was mine. And I point to my daughter, I say, this was mine. So when my mother tries to overstep her bounds, her parental bounds, you know, her grandma duties, I say, uh uh-uh. uh. This was mine, so yeah, okay. I'm, I'm on it right there. So yeah, I know, that, I know that how to subtle kind of that subtle hostility towards way. men is what you have to watch for. That subtle hostility that yeah. I'm going to be in defiance of his authority because you and I both know a man is not going to sacrifice himself for a female who's challenging his authority and challenging his 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 masculinity. That we don't do that. That's a recipe for getting divorced. That's a recipe for getting uninvested in. That's a recipe for getting abandoned. That's what that is. And as a man, you understand how to not do that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not too hard on my mom, even though I do like correct her and step in when I hear her slide little slick stuff in there. But she's just operating from a place of fear, in my opinion. You know, I, I, I'm apathetic to her plight and how, you know, what her mindset is now. And she's kind of, she's kind of tamed down a little bit. She's going into her early seventies now. She's in her late sixties now. Yeah, so she done slowed down and hit the brakes. She's retired. So, you know, well, you've done enough in that regard. So like I say, just basically you've mentioned it. Let's, let's revisit this in a couple of years. You've mentioned it in a couple of years. It'll register to her and she'll know, okay, dad's mentioned this again. You're not putting on too much. Just, I, I just don't want you to do too much to put on too much. I don't think it's too soon. I just don't want it to be too much. You mentioned it. I think that's good. Let's revisit this in a couple of years. Other than that, I don't have an issue with it. Excellent. One last question. Um, Would it be beneficial for me, because I'm not married right now, would it be beneficial to me me, uh, and for her to uh, give an example for her, like get a wife and then kind of like show her, even though her mother and I, that's not going to happen. 
I mean, know, I, I think that's that always, I think that is always important if it is practical. Having a proper, feminine, appropriate female role model is, I mean, there's only so much you can do as a man. You can be many things, but you cannot be a mother. But it would have to be the right one. You know, it can't just be, well, let me just go grab a chick. It's, it's, we, we tried that before, so it can't be that. But if if you're able to do that, absolutely. Absolutely. Word to the wise. Word to the wise. Well, great program, big bro. Peace. Thank you very much for checking in with us here. Let me go ahead and get Byron. He's been sitting there on Zoom for a minute. Let's go ahead and bring you to the front. Byron, go ahead and unmute yourself. I see your microphone there. Please tell me Byron got his life together. You hear me? Okay, there he is. All right, Byron, what's on your mind? How you doing, sir? Um, I'm just looking for a mentor, and I was asking, could you mentor me? Okay, what do you think you would need mentoring for? Uh, just uh, just money, really. Finances. Okay, and what is about your finances that you think is wrong? Um, just investing, um, just trying to make more money. I want to make more money. Okay. I mean, I'm in the process. I'm in school. Slow down. How old are you? I'm 31. Where do you live? Savannah, Georgia. Okay. Where are your people from? Oh, right here in Georgia. Okay. It sounds like you got an accent. Oh, I'm right here in Georgia. Born and raised, man. All right, with well, Savannah, he's just on the other side from Florida. Okay, well, because uh, right now I'm dealing with something a little bit different. Are you a member of my patron? No, sir. Okay, take a look in the description of the video. It's in the description of every video. Take a look in the description of the video. You're going to see my patron. I want you to sign up for that. We are doing a program here tomorrow, 12 noon. Tomorrow, 12 noon Central Time. I expect okay. to see your face in the place. Okay, sir. So I, I will be looking for you. All right, sir. All right. Thank you very much for checking in with us here. Let's go ahead and chop it up. Let's get you on the right track here. Let me go ahead and see if I can get... Uh, now, there's a couple of other folk who are in the waiting room. So... I'm going to try to bring you on here, but you need to make sure that you start your video. We're not going to load up your video or your audio for people to hear you or see you uh, unless you are there. So make sure you do that. That is important. Okay. Lost Knowledge is going to be leaving. He's going to be leaving because he has not started his video. So let me be very, very clear, folks. If you do not start your video, you will not start anything. So do not call up or try to go on Zoom. We only have one person here who gets to do that. All right, let's go ahead and take another phone call here. Let me get call from area code 312. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, my name is uh, Lee. I'm calling from Chicago, Illinois. Lee from Chicago. What's on your mind? Uh, thank you, Jason, for uh, helping me get into uh, IT. Right now, n- next week, I'm going to graduate from IT school, and I got uh, three certifications. I have my uh, Linux certification. I have my NT. I have my uh, MTA, fundamental uh, security. Oh, I'm sorry, my MTA uh, certification. I, and I also I have my Server Plus certification. I just want to thank you for uh, getting me to IT. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, so you're saying that you've gotten in IT, you've gotten three year certifications, and you're saying that that is a direct result of me? Uh, yes, because I went through your, because I watched to the Black Channel back in October of last year, I believe. And uh, while, while I watched the uh, workshop, at your black channel, I, that 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 side that really helped me get into IT and it helped me uh, change my uh, life and stuff. I just want to uh, thank you for that as well. For, okay, uh, putting so that IT workshop. So you're saying that you uh, watched the IT workshop and that was able to get you started into getting a career in IT? Yes, 
Okay, well, like I say, I've gotten a number of different folks here. First of all, I'm very glad to hear that. So this is a good start. Of course, you know you're just getting started. So he already knows this. So he's not finishing, Correct. but this is giving him the foundation to get started. And definitely this is where he wants to begin at it from. I think he also found out the hardest part is beginning, but just get out there and get started. And you're, the more you gain from it, the better you're going to get at it, the more comfortable you're going to get. And, and then it goes from there. So I'm very glad to hear you got started on that. I would love to hear back from you here in six months to see how things are going. But definitely, um, thank you. For, I, I want to thank you for following through on it. That's the most that's the most important thing. All I can do is show you the way um, it, you got to do the job and do putting in the work and you started doing that. So congratulations to you, brother. Thank you so much, Jason. I also, and I'm 28 years old. I just now oh, man. figure out how life with really it is because, yeah, because I'm 28 years old because through my whole life, I have, I had no desire in my life. I had no passion. The only thing I was working was to Josh try to figure out life because, you know, I came from a single model background. And when I started listening to your program, the business, you really have really uh, opened up to me, not become the average guy. You want me, you want me to like uh, this expand things in life and become a better version of my life, not just sit there become an average, becoming an average guy because you always teaching about, uh, be, you always teach about a lot of times about average means struggling and I don't want to start making uh $40,000 anymore. I want to do better for myself. And, and you always talk about doubling the income. And that's the reason why, huh? Jason is right. I need to stop being the average guy. I'm listening to him so many times. And a lot of people, every time I start listening to you, a lot of people have come and doubt me constantly, uh, pointing fingers at me and say, Lee, don't listen to Jason, but like, he don't know. He's a talk. He don't know what he's talking about. I'm like, I believe he, I believe that he know he knows what he's talking about because, because I really understand that average means struggling. I'm done, done being average. Now it's time for me to step my game up. And it's time for me to uh, get into a skill set. And that's the reason I chose IT, because I know that IT that could really help me to uh, do better things and not just not just be good at IT. But, and like you all say, not just be good at IT to sell by being excellent. In it. Well, you know, you really taught me that direction as well, too. Well, I'm, I'm very glad to hear that. You are the age I was when I started the process of rebuilding from my third business. I actually gone to business three times. I went in and failed uh, three times. So you're the same age that Jason Black was then. The last time that things didn't go well. Ten seconds. And let me tell you, probably the biggest benefit I would have had is somebody who had walked that road already who could talk to me. That was the that was the real thing I was missing. I put together the Black Channel and now the business for one reason, to create a repository of information that I wished had been there when I was your age. Everybody and their mama is handing out advice, and that makes it damn confusing. And I understand this. I'm very sympathetic and understand this. Everybody and their mama is handing out advice like cocaine packets. Everybody's pretending they know what they're talking about. Everybody's pretending that they're on it and it can be so damn confusing. All I can really do is give you all one rule of thumb. Take a look at the life that person is living and then ask yourself, just remember one thing. If you listen to that person, the only thing they can help you do is get where they are. And if that person is struggling and they're telling, giving you advice, you need to understand, okay, couldn't help but notice you struggling. So yeah, I got the sneaking suspicion. If I listen to you, I'm going to be struggling too. You're very nice. You're very polite. You're very congenial, but you're struggling. And I can't overlook that. That was a lesson that I wound up learning. I have met hundreds of nice people in my life they're nice they're polite they're courteous they'll they'll walk your grandmom across the street and they couldn't 
give you a ride to the grocery store or $20 to loan you if their life depended on it. And I just realized that niceness has a very limited value to it. Right now, I need a jerk who I can get $100 from or 1000 And when I realized that that's the way that things really work, I started making a difference of the priorities. So for all of you, and not just the caller, but all of you, when you're talking to family, friends, kinfolk, or whatever, all of them are going to start handing out advice. And you're going to have some of them because they're single moms or they're screw-ups and failures. They're not going to like what I'm saying here because it hits deep. Because they want to believe that they're going to get another chance that they're not going to get. Because they made mistakes they will not recover from because of their arrogance and avarice. You have a chance to do something different. So in your case, like I say, it was a hard pill for them to swallow. Fortunately for you, you didn't listen to that. And I can say three words that your family and your friends will never say. Call me back. If I tell you to do something, nobody Nobody has ever been able to say those three words to any of you all. I will tell you, call me back. Call me back publicly. Call me back publicly and say, Jason, I'm here to give my report. You don't have to wait. And that's the other thing. Now, we weren't even talking about what you're talking about tonight. But I, I, I will always take this call every single day and twice on Sundays. If I have given you advice, call me back. You call back and publicly say, Jason, I would like to give a report in front of everybody listening to you. Let's go with it. Because you see, when you're legitimate, you ain't afraid for the people that you've given advice to and given instructions to, to come back to you. You're not afraid to do that publicly. You don't demand that they call you somewhere else. You tell them, yeah, come up here front and center. Let's put it all up here. That's something your kinfolk will never do. So I'm glad to hear things are going well for you here. But you are at step one. So next comes step number two. That means I need to hear back from you again in six months. Yes, sir, you will. Okay. And I thank expect- you once again for changing my life. Well, I expect to hear from you here. You can't pay it back, pay it forward. Thank you very I already much. did. Now I have my, one of my uh, I already did, sir. Uh, I have one of my friends, which is a female. I put her on at IT as well. Now she's about to finish up in October. Well, good. Maybe she'll. Maybe she can be somebody you can work with in the future. Thank you very much for checking in with us here tonight. Very, very important. Like I say, you give a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach him how to fish. He can start a whole village. Teach him how to fish, he'll start a whole village. And that's going to be important for you. I have never been one to want to go around and tell people about what I got. I've never been that kind of guy. I don't do that. I would much rather talk about how you can get it. I'd much rather talk about how you can get it. I I don't like to talk about what I'm doing. I would much rather sit here and talk about how you can get yours. I got mine. I'm over it. I got mine. I'm over it. I'm good. I'm good. I'd much rather sit here and talk to you about how you can get yours. I've been there and done that. How many times can I do it? You know, once you reach a certain point in life, it's when you get to that age where you start doing that mentoring and you've reached that upper echelon. Now you in that you're in that leadership position now. It's that's what we're supposed to get at now. So once I get to this point in life, it's like, man, I done, I done bought the cars, I done do all that stuff right there. I've got myself in a good position. That so it I, that doesn't fulfill me. What fulfills me now is helping other people to get there. What fulfills me now is debunking fake people. What fulfills me now is watching you all succeed. That's what fulfills me now. That's legacy. That's legacy. So for us older cats, and like I say, I'm fortunate enough that I became older. As me and the previous caller were talking about there, we got a bunch of dudes we buried before they ever got this far along. At least I get to say I got older. I know a bunch of them didn't get this far. So my my job right now, I get my fulfillment out of helping you all get there. I get my fulfillment about helping you 
walk this road and seeing you get yours. There, there's no benefit to you hearing about. The only benefit hearing about what I've done matters is that, well, it validates that he's been able to do it, but it's worthless if he can't teach you how to do it. So it doesn't have any value for me to talk about what I've got or I've done unless I can tell you now here's the step by step of how you do it. I got young men in their 20s calling me up. One making 130,000, one on his way to making 130,000 and ain't 40 or 50 years old neither. Not 40 or 50 years old, neither. So they're getting uh, the head start good. If you want to know how we're going to change this thing for the next hundred years is by having a competent, resourceful group of individuals, male and female. So this is the kind of thing I like to hear. If anybody wants to ask what I'm doing for the next generation and what I'm doing for the young people, if you sit back and let me game you up, you sit back and let somebody coach you and you're going to get some championships. You're going to get some championships. It's going to happen for you. We've been here for over three hours. Good grief. Let me go ahead and wrap things up here. I want to thank you all for joining us here on tonight's broadcast of The Business. If you are new here, welcome to the program that laid the foundation upon which all of these other YouTube channels copycat and steal from on a daily basis. You heard it directly from the source. Click that red subscribe button, click that yellow notification bell, and join us each and every time. And if you haven't been to our patron, we're going to be doing that here tomorrow, 12 noon. You get to talk to me one-on-one -on -one for an extended period of time, so I'm very glad to have that opportunity to do that. So tomorrow, I expect to see you there with us. The link is in the description of each and every video. My mods also put it in the chat, in the super chat there for you as well. So definitely make sure you join us for that. I want to thank everyone, everyone, and I mean everybody who has contributed to support tonight's program on PayPal or Cash App. Thank you very much for doing that. We appreciate that from you here. Uh, Divine Feminine doing the most as always here. Ricardo, thank you to everyone else. Um, oh, Divine Feminine is making threats. Side dude. No, ma'am. I don't do side dudes, side order. Now, she's making threats over there, y'all. Gotta watch out. But thank you all here for joining us here tonight, as always. And this concludes tonight's broadcast of The Business. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, Mr. Jason Black. And until next time, my brothers and my sisters from around the world, remember, handle your business or your business will handle you. <laughs>